What up, bros? Welcome to another BroGraph broadcast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is our wonderful friend from across the pond. Uh, you guys may know him as Raid Zero on the Twitter and the Slack channels, uh, or I, I think also on Reddit. <laughs> Instagram. But, uh, and Instagram, and yeah, all the social network stuff. But uh, we know him as our dear friend, Mr. Phil Roberts. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. BroGraph is a supplement to our site, BroGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with plugins, tutorials, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects, plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, or working for the man. And you can email us your questions at BroGraph at BroGraph.com. We would love to hear from you about show topic ideas and questions and anything you want to hear about on the show. Or... Uh, or, I, or if you've got uh-huh. ideas for show topics, you can come join mm-hmm. us now on the Slack channel, the BroGraph Slack channel. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Dave will put a link in the show notes uh, for the sign up to sign up for the Slack channel. We actually. actually sh- yeah, I was going to no, say won't. it's actually real simple now. You can go to BroGraph.com forward slash Slack. Oh, okay. Or you can just go under the extras menu on the site, and there's a link to it there as well, if you you don't remember that. But um, there's a sign-up right now. It's fully open. Uh, We talked about that. You know, some people, like, there has to be an approval process so you don't get Mm -hmm. spammers and whatnot. But um, We enjoy the spammers. (laughs) <laughs> right i'm a spammer but for now it's going well it's it's not you know we haven't had any issues yet um it's completely open for everybody so you know um it's anyway. pretty cool so yeah it within there we've got a channel specifically for show topics and we've gotten just a bunch mm-hmm. of really good show topics yeah uh, already there's also a, a place in there for you know uh, 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 people's people and Rick and Morty, or you know, if you want to say prayers to Octane Jesus. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, it's one of those things where you know, Matt, you talked about starting it last week, and I just mm-hmm. was like, uh, you know, that could be cool. I don't want to like, you know, everybody has a Slack, everybody mm-hmm. has forums, everybody has, you know, all of that. But um, there's, I don't know, there's something fun about like a specific community. You know, because this is everybody who is like a BroGraph person. Yeah. You know, already. So it's kind of fun because we already kind of know the inside jokes and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of that stuff. And it's amazing within the first 24 hours, like it just, it, it, you know, blew up pretty quick, like to well, the yeah. point where I had to turn off my notifications. Small manner. We got like, in a small manner. We got like 30 people on there, which is cool. All of our close friends, you know. Yeah. I mean, within a 24 hour period, that's not bad. You know, I think, um, you know, it, I think it's nice to have a small community yeah, like that, you know. So we'll see where it goes. Get in there. It's a lot of fun. Um, everybody, you know, asks questions and sh- shares links. And I don't know. It's cool. So Yeah, and I think, Phil, you're cool like fire. one of two people in in London or whatever. So like, yeah, do you yeah, ever yeah. feel like you're just talking to yourself on there? <laughs> <laughs> not, not at all. It's, it's, it's really good, uh, like, for resources and um mm-hmm. just chatting with the guys that you you know like that i met in half uh, at half res and mm-hmm. yeah it's been really good yeah there there's a bit of overlap even though we're six hours off yeah because you know, we all <laughs> yeah. work crazy hours anyway so you know yeah i just get Whatever. up to 60 messages in the morning That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and now the cool <laughs> what was thing, it though, tons of taco gifts you woke up to the other day? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But there's there's some really fun stuff in there. Like um, for for one thing, I like that you can do all unreads and you can see all your unreads at the top. Mm-hmm. You know, for the different uh, the different channels. And keep in mind, you have to kind of I think I think you have to join the channels. Uh, some of the channels yeah, manually. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. So you, you just have to go to channels and pick the ones you want. Of course, I just subscribed to all of them. But um, the other thing is that we put something called Paperbot in there mm-hmm. and. You can go to Paperbot and sign up to get all of the links that mm-hmm. people post, which is actually kind of cool. And you could set a daily or a weekly email, which is actually kind of fun because then you get this email that comes in your inbox with just everything cool that everybody's posted. Yep. You know, the show's going to so, write itself now, isn't it? That's what I, I was saying, dude. It's like people, <laughs> you know, putting in show notes and or uh, show topic ideas and like putting in people's people stuff and it's like <laughs> that's all we should have done this a long time ago the show basically <laughs> totally. writes itself and like yeah. dave and i have our own like private channel where we're putting in show notes and stuff so it's like we can just copy and paste and put it right in it's nice yeah totally <laughs> totally so 
Um, also, um, you know, we don't mention it that much, but, you know, Rando Render still mm-hmm. going strong. I'm sorry, I haven't updated it on our website recently. I will get to that at some point, add all the new ones, because there's probably one or two months of new Rando Renders floating around. Yeah, dude, Sensitive Q has been doing like... Oh, man, yeah, Sensitive Q is like solidly doing it dude, every day. I think he's day. on day like man. 130 or something of Rando yeah. Renders. That is Absolute insane. machine. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So machine. still going strong, you know. Yeah. Um, it, you know, that's great. We're gonna, you know, we will update on the site um, eventually and put in some more. We got to put in some more stuff in yep. there. Day one hundred and thirty. You know, sure. wow. Orange, pe- orange peel radio. That's <laughs> mad. Yeah, that's mad. Uh, but so. what's cool is like, I mean, just use this as an example. Like, you can see just how much better he's gotten every single day by doing this practice stuff. Oh, totally. You know. Right. Yeah, and like right. it's it, it's cool because like now anytime someone's you know sends him something he's like okay i've done it before i know what to do even if our 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 options on rando ranger are totally weird you know like it's There's still you're, like, you're mixing it up you're trying to be creative yeah. it's cool There's still like i don't know how many million combinations if you go yeah. through it yeah you know so um and don't forget our plugins are out there as yep. well we've got the brograph luminous which is an octane spotlight. We've got uh, regular luminous light, which is a a um, like a gobo type deal. That's yeah, like it's basically gobos for if you're looking for an easy solution for gobos for the standard or physical render, it will work in there. And we've got uh, MoGraph light. Yep. For um, anybody who's using the um, Cinema 4D light version mm-hmm. uh, that comes with After Effects for free. It, uh, um, yeah, it basically recreates all the MoGraph cloner uh, stuff with limitations. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, Pixel Dirt Shader is <laughs> in there too. Shader. We don't we don't make Pixel Dirt Shader, but we sell it. So mm-hmm. um, if you're looking to to check it out, you know, if you buy it through us, it helps support us. And then uh, so that that's about it on that. But uh, the one thing I did want to hit up real quick is. Uh, you know, th- this show is going to be coming out later, so most people probably heard about this already. But because uh, we did not mention we're recording super early on this, uh, like yes. eight eight days, nine days early. Yeah, so, Dave and I uh, are presenting at NAB East, uh, yeah. which is cool. And then uh, we're going Woo! to Denver. We're going to be at the Colorado C4D meetup. Which mm-hmm. will this be out before then? This will be out before then, right? This will be out before. I've got that, the yes. information on that, Dave. You keep going on your thing. I'll find the information. Cool. Um, but Cineware uh, mm-hmm. for Illustrator came out, and it's really interesting to me um, to like think about what the possibilities can be with this. It's a really, it's it's a you know just a really great idea. Um, you know, if you're used to using it in After Effects, I mean, Illustrator is you know there's just so much you can do when it comes to um, design, and especially when you know product and stuff. Uh-huh. You know, is it going to be the uh, same? Is it going to be the same sort of thing where it's integrated into Illustrator, like it is with it, yes. the After Effects? Oh, yeah. I've actually played with it. Oh, I oh, downloaded yeah. it the other day and worked with it. It is very awesome. It is yeah. super super cool. So basically, um, it you go on to uh, to Maxon's website and you install the installer, you know, and so mm-hmm. then you can just basically do you know like an Illustrator file place and then you place whatever you yeah. can place a C four D like uh, uh, object in there. And then if mm-hmm. you go into wow. C4D and you change the dimensions and stuff like that, it'll automatically update. And then you've got a little option at the top that where you can say, do you want alpha or do you want none or something? And it just looks killer. It is, it's it, for those who are like, especially people who are using like sketch and tune type, type stuff, It it's going to be, it, I think it'll be a super game changer in Illustrator, you know? I wonder if it'll ever get to Photoshop as well. I don't know. It seems like it would. I mean, the thing is, Photoshop already has kind of a 3D integration into it. Yeah, but it's awful. Yeah, yeah so bad. It is awful. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. So, but so like bad. being able to like automatically change textures and stuff, you know, like you can yeah. change textures within Illustrator. And so like you can just do a whole bunch of mock ups of different stuff. Very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, okay, I got the brewery information. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, for those in Colorado, um, it will be October 24th at the Diebolt Brewing, brew, Brewing, yeah, uh, uh, from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, in the Highlands. You can go to... Did you, did you say what day? 
The 24th of October. The 24th. Yeah, Tuesday, okay. the 24th of October. Diebolt okay. Brewing. Brew. Brew. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't say the word. Brewing? Brewing. Brewing. There we go. Brewing. I keep on wanting to brewing. say brewery, but I also... Brewing. Brewing. Anyway. What are you brewing? So, brewing. yeah, meet us there, 6.30 to 9. We're going to have the good time. I don't know if we're presenting we can, on anything. We can, if we are, hopefully... I thought we were presenting. Yeah, I was just going to present the same stuff from... That's what I thought we were doing. Are we not presenting? I don't know. I haven't talked to Wigan EJ really out. about it, but oh, we'll have fun, funny. whatever we do. See, I thought you had worked out all the details. I thought nah. we were presenting the same thing as NAB. I mean, we're going to be hanging out with EJ for like five days. If you guys are up in right. uh, Colorado, you know, if you guys live in Colorado or visiting Colorado, hit us up. We'll be there from Friday the 20th until the 25th is when we leave. So hanging cool. out, having a good time. Cool. It's a shame they're not recorded in uh, New York. I know, the, I know, I know. I was thinking show. that same thing, but actually, that brings a lot of stress down on our part. You yeah. know, yeah. there's only like up, five or to see. six <laughs> presenters. There's only five or six presenters in New York, and uh, they're doing the same thing every day. So we're rep- we're basically repeating yeah. the same presentation. You right. know, right. Uh, right. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, I go yeah. on at I noon. Probably, by the way, in case anyone I should, is there. <laughs> I should probably. Of course, a bit more. this is going to be in the future, so like. Right, it'll be too late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. So great thanks seeing for everybody. all you guys who uh, came and yeah. hung out with us. That was really cool. <laughs> right, I guess we should mention that in our little intro on the on the previous week's episode because we haven't recorded that yet. So we'll do in that last today. week's episode. Last yeah. week's episode previously on Brograph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man. S- skip the um, intro. Skip the intro. Right. right. <laughs> We um, need some intense music. <laughs> Previously on Brograph. <laughs> Dave, I hate you. Matt, you're going to die. Ah, rate zero. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I've had my first soda in like four days, so I'm like feeling it good. I've had a coffee because nice. I was like, I didn't know how long this is going to go on for. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a good choice. That was a very good choice. I took a day off the low-carb diet, and I am totally downing a Slurpee right now because it's so hot outside. That's funny. It's so hot. Are you hot. still doing that keto ketogenic? Man, you are so rock solid while we, while we were in Chicago. On yeah. That. How much have you not lost? not doing the pizza or anything. 16. That's good. That's, yeah. really That's real good. good. So, I mean, it's it's easy. Once you get into ketosis, it's so easy. Everybody's like, oh, it's so hard. I'm like, you don't understand. Yeah, it's hard for the first couple of weeks until you're in ketosis. After that, you're like, eh, I don't want food. It's cool. Yeah, it's it's like magic, a, I swear. A carb coma. It's, it's uh, I swear. That's my it's favorite like kind of coma. <laughs> it is like that, full and other magic. I've been eating a coma. meal a day. A meat no, coma. sorry. That's the meat sweats. You get the meat sweats. The meat sweats. Yeah. And then the yeah. carb coma yeah. is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into some Ravcock. What's your flavor? Already? Yeah. No. Oh, all right. Yeah, because we got we got topics and stuff having to uh, do with I'm it. I'm glad so. you chose this as the topic because I figured Phil would be the perfect one for this. Anyway, which <laughs> w- which one? Your topic, the topic of the day. I'm just looking ahead in your notes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think well, I think that was from him actually. Oh. Good. So. Yeah, what's it, your it came, it, let's do it came up in the yeah. in the Slack. So yeah. uh, I thought it'd be a good, good yeah. thing to pop that in there. So um, in Ravcock, um, you do have a link to Simon Fielder's talk. Is this from the event that Maxon just did, or was it? No, I think it. I think it's from either last year or the year before. Um, from uh, what's the name of that that event? Uh, I can't remember. CBM. Yeah. I yeah I C B yeah something like that. I B C or something. I B C yeah. I C B N is like yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I gave you this link because um, I was doing. I was doing some uh, style frames for a trainer uh, at work. So trainers are called shoes here. Yeah, or sneakers. <laughs> sneakers. Oh yes, as yes. You, as you were saying, um, and yeah, the um, kind of the brief was like Tron and lasers and things like that. And I remember seeing um, this talk like a long time ago. It was probably in March, sort of time when I when I first started um, looking into cinema, and. Um, I remember this scan line. I was like, "Oh, that's so oh. cool!" Because like when yeah, I was, when I was seeing Octane, cool. and this is so so cool. And um, yeah, so I just I watched that talk and kind of he kind of mentions it. That he uses the dirt node, and then it doesn't he doesn't really go into it how exactly he does it. So I just sat there and kind of figured it out and got mm-hmm. something looking quite cool. And in, uh, in the end, it's it's really good. 
That's cool. But that's that's one of the, that's nice. one of the videos that got me like, oh my god, I want to get Octane. Like uh-huh. watching right. this, watching right. this talk, I was just like, man, it looks so good. Yeah, that's cool. Gosh, um, I, their their setup at for the Maxon booth is like so nice over there. Yeah, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, got that big big screen. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> what else we got? Um, so. The other thing that we were going to talk about is that uh, Phil, you're gonna you're gonna do a tutorial for us on the site. That's gonna be yeah, fun. yeah. So I th- like I I mentioned it on the Slack that I I, I started doing this uh, scan line and kind of figured it out, and um, yeah, just I thought it'd be a good like nice quick tutorial just to to show everybody how to do it, and um, I w- I wanted to do like a small a small series just explaining each node like as I, as I've learned. Um, I, I learn the node and then I kind of try and think of a way of an interesting way to use that node um, mm-hmm. obviously obviously, some of them it, it's not going to work like that like the multiplied node it's, it, right. as it, by itself it's not really going to do anything <laughs> but um, it'd be nice to explain those like, and go through and just keep them like short and sweet mm-hmm. um, just so there's a, like a nice playlist um, of what each node does in Octane <laughs> this is a sick spot that this guy did it's really good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that is it's, really it's, good. It is really good. Um, <clears throat> anyway, he so spoke been... this year as well. He he, he spoke this year, um, and he had a. I, I don't know if it's a personal project or a um, or a or a paid project, but um, that talk was really good as well. But you've been you've been doing photogrammetry stuff. Yeah, so... yeah. So, um, like, obviously, I'm 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 a staffer. I'm not I'm not freelance. Um, so we've got quite. a quite a good team of um and a cgi department and an r&d department and all of this sort of stuff and um the kind of sneaker or trainer market is one of the markets that we as a company we we're trying to to get into and um there's there's a brand called super dry in um in england but they are a worldwide company but mm-hmm. they're they're looking to bring out a range of trainers and a kind of looking at creative houses to kind of show um their product in the best way they possibly can and we've kind of taken that opportunity um so we've got their trainers and then we've used this technology so we're doing photogrammetry taking lots of shots uh, lighting it all really diffuse so we don't get any Mm -hmm. reflections and all that sort of stuff um and then obviously put it into the uh, the soft software i Mm -hmm. think it's is it photo Photo scanner photo scanner yeah 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 Uh, so we use that and then you get like a really high density mesh from that. It's all triangles, yeah. which then we have one of our modeling guys who retopologizes the whole thing, retextures it, like all of the all of those stuff Jeez. to make the shoe look really really nice. Um, See, that's what I was going to ask you because a lot of times when you do that photogrammetry stuff, it mm-hmm. comes out. You know, yeah. it's not that it's bad. It's just you know, it's there's it's. The, the mesh is ridiculous so like it's so dense it's so so how, dense how did how do they go about like fixing that do they start from scratch do they do they yeah just... literally, literally it's it's such a like that's the that's the thing at the moment like the actual taking the photos and putting it into agile stuff is so quick and so automatic but to actually get mm-hmm. it to a usable asset where it's all uh, the, all the topology is is correct and like, it it, it, the only way to do it is manually and mm-hmm. it, yeah. it can take a week or so to just to do like one one shoe Jeez. obviously yeah. you, you might be able to you might be able to use that um like for the other shoe like just mirroring the shoe but then changing some of the textures and or just doing part of the mesh if it's like a logo for instance on on the mm-hmm. side of the shoe but um it's a very manual process and there's some plugins like uh, the guys that work they use 3ds max um to do all of this sorry um, there's some there's yeah i know <laughs> there's some plugins that um that do kind of get you part of the way there but i don't know at that sort of level that you, you just you just need that personal touch and you just you need that level of detail um that you can only get from like a professional modeler basically that's uh you know that's the thing like i don't know when I, when i see that kind of thing i'm like i mean i guess it's helpful to have something to start with yeah but i'm like why do you even bother doing the photogrammetry you could just design it 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. it seems to me like you can get the you can get a pretty accurate scale and like I, I don't know. Maybe you that, yeah. some That's the that's the thing. It's it's getting and stuff and I don't know. If it's the if it's the technology and the kind of the shape and like say like for instance Nike have spent a lot of time and money on the materials and the design of the shoe and all of that stuff and then if a modeler guy just has it sat next to him on his desk and mm-hmm. gets that mm-hmm. slightly wrong like that's the kind of you d- you don't want to put that kind of pressure on your on yourself mm-hmm. like having the having the photogrammetry you know ex- it's exactly that length true yeah. that the, all of the design true. features are going to be correct and you, you're just saving yourself up you know all that i mean um, headache. I, I did it when i designed something i, I took um, i probably talked about it on the show when i got a 3d printer i wanted to make something that would fit into a slot inside of my truck yeah and mm-hmm. i yeah. did have you know um micrometer or whatever and, and sat there and measured all the pieces and kind of mm-hmm. sketched it out and all of that but I also took a whole bunch of photos of it with my iPhone and brought it into Agisoft and yeah. uh, and came out with a model and I and again you know it was an ugly mesh you know mm-hmm. uh, but it I was able to kind of overlay that over the version I was making and do all the the like perfectly accurate measurements yeah because there's no way photogrammetry is going to be perfect measurements Mm -hmm. and uh, i was able to just use a combination of those things Mm -hmm. one was the the all of all of it that it really did having that model ahead of time was just make sure that i was lining things up correctly and that ratios were correct and you know so i can i guess i can see that a little bit so Mm -hmm. and we and we do a lot of um you know like um stuff for bottles and glasses you know for the like for beer and and things mm-hmm. like that and mm-hmm. they, they those glasses they they're really they look simple but if, when you actually get into it it's mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of like intricate oh, yeah. glass detail and all, all of that sort of stuff and um we found that photogrammetry really helps in that sort of situation but what you have to do with obviously very reflective materials is make them very dull so we'll use um like dulling spray and like speckle like speckle paint like mm-hmm. put on it j- just so the computer yeah. kind of can read it um yeah because because otherwise you'll just get a, you'll get a really bad scan otherwise that's interesting because i did not when i was doing stuff for diageo i did not use any sort of photogrammetry it was all uh just lots of flat photos mm-hmm. you know from the top and side and just making sure they were all the same size and um <laughs> You know, even holding them up in front of the screen while you're working, just to just to look and see, you know, to compare things. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it sounds yeah. funny, but I know, you know, it needs it's, to get turned back this way a little bit. Yeah, you got you Into got to think though, mouth. that we, we we've got we've got quite a lot of resources. Be like, there's thirty guys that work it just in my office, so Jeez. there's yeah there's plenty of resources to kind of do these sort of things and it's it's planned way in advance and like mm-hmm. people are putting ideas into the pot and all of that sort of stuff even before the job starts so um yeah. obviously like a smaller production it's it's harder to do those kind of things and it's harder to charge your client like oh i need to do a bit of r&d for this project or mm-hmm. i need yeah. to g- get 10 glasses because they're <laughs> not going to all give you perfect you know yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Research and development. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're, gonna have, you're gonna have to so. send a case of that beer um, for, <laughs> totally yeah. for research purposes. <laughs> uh, you know, the problem was working on stuff like that. You're not allowed to ship in in America anyway. You're not allowed yeah. to ship over state lines. So we were working with a Is company that still in New York. That way? Yeah, they were not allowed to send us any actual product. So, so what we had to do was buy it at the liquor store next door and build them for it. That's fine. Which is so stupid. Uh, we were, and for the new stuff, it's like, how do you do that? Well, they have to get special uh, bottles um, that are empty put together and then ship the empty bottles over, you know, for the new products. Yeah. You know, but Thanks, which, yeah. you know, seems like, oh, they can just ship it over. The problem is that you have to put on the, um, the caps and stuff empty. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Does that make sense? So, like, usually a machine puts those caps on. And so you have to get them to, to find the ones that have the caps on them already rather than the empty ones mm-hmm. uh, to, to send over. And, um, but with nothing in them, which, you know. So um, 
tell us about, um, I guess, tell us a little bit more about where you work and tell us a little bit more about like what you do on day to day that's not related to. Yeah, uh, because so, you're okay. not, you didn't, you just recently got into C40, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I started in March. I got, I basically in March. got. In yeah, March I started, this year. started in March, yeah, of this yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> I quit. Um, I quit, Dave. But I, I, I kind yeah. of started. I it, it was a it was a New Year's resolution, basically. Um, so I work I work for a company called Taylor James, mm-hmm. and uh, not we've, to be we've, confused with James Taylor. Yeah. No. <laughs> no uh, T- Taylor James. We got offices in London, New York, LA, Berlin, and Detroit. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we've got quite a few thing, uh, quite a few offices. Um, London is the hub, um, and that's what, that's where I work. Uh, and I'm actually a uh, a creative retoucher, specifically for the automotive industry. Um, so I deal with um, like render passes on a on a daily basis, uh, making stills. Mm-hmm. So I'm comping. Uh, render passes like of cars cars that are not coming out for one two years into the future Mm -hmm. uh, into photography that's shot usually in LA um, just just Mm. because it's just got every kind of uh, landscape Mm -hmm. possible yeah so you've Um, actually spent some time in LA correct yeah 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 so um, I I'm I'm one of the lead guys um, for the automotive team so I have uh, three retouches uh, under me and then I have uh, we have four CG uh, full-time CG guys that just do automotive, and then we have two um, R and D and pipeline as well. Mm-hmm. Wow, um, cool. Which do deal with all that stuff, and uh, me and another guy called Dave uh, go to LA uh, to schmooze the clients and nice. <laughs> be on the be on the shoot with the photographer just to make sure we got get everything shooting HDRIs, um, taking all the measurements, um, doing comps on set, uh, all the, all that sort of stuff. Nice. Yeah. So um, tell me about, uh, okay, so I've done a bit of retouching, you know, mm-hmm. and I feel like, I don't know. So I, I kind of feel the same way about like your way into C4D as I do mm-hmm. the same way I feel about graphic designers going into motion design, yeah. you know, yeah. like if you've got a good motion design back or a, a good graphic design background, you've got a killer motion design background, you know, in a yeah. way. But yeah. like, I feel like, retouchers people who are used to dealing with like how to make things look a little bit more realistic or you know how to basically photoshop their way into you know these really awesome scenes or whatever like i feel Uh like you would have a really big advantage over other c40 artists specifically because of your comping ability you know what i'm saying so yeah so like my my job is to imagine the end result Mm -hmm. so like pretty much every creative retoucher kind of has that ability to kind of see the things that they have in front of them and then yeah like imagine all of those things into one image and Mm -hmm. and the final result at the end and it's it's kind of you kind of have to explain that to the client you also have to like obviously do do things in stages and like tell tell the client at which stage this 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 is that and like it's obviously going to be a little bit more the next time and i think that has definitely been an advantage like me now going to into 3d as well because i knew so much about 3d and render passes and the pipeline mm-hmm. and all okay. of that all of that sort of stuff and 32 bit flow and like all all of, all of those sort of things and i was just like i really i really really need to learn how to do it myself mm-hmm. And it kind of yeah came around and like the automotive industry and doing automotive work, although it pays the bills and it like it's really big budget sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly the most creative. Right. Um, so whereas I was I was being I'm I'm going on t- on shoots for two weeks in in LA and then I've got a four months period where I'm I'm actually doing that job and running that job. Wow. It's not creatively fulfilling sometimes Mm -hmm. so doing cinema 4d and doing my own stuff and what i'm passionate about Mm -hmm. was kind of 
gave me a new lease of life in in that work as well because yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i was i was getting to outlet even though like i work <laughs> until 2 a.m sometimes just learning how to do a fall off on a like a text uh-huh. animation or something like that but to me that's that's great i'm using my brain i'm mm-hmm. l- learning a new skill and like i'm i'm and quite good at gives you reta- the ability to uh uh like kind of know what you're talking about when you're talking with some of these other 3D artists and stuff, yeah. you know, for stuff that you need on your side. Like exactly, you're able to exactly. talk that same language, which is nice. That's it. Yeah. yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was it was kind of like a New Year's resolution. I was like, right, I need to I need to do something more creative. Um, the kind of opportunities don't always arise at work. Although I'm I'm the automotive guy in inverted commas um i do get to work on other other projects and lead other projects but the majority of my work is that so i was like right i just i just need something creative that that i can call my own it's my own thing come up with a name and just put it just put it out there you know yeah so i started in january watching just tutorials you know you just sit there and just watch people use the program first mm-hmm. you kind of mm-hmm. find you know um find your way around and mm-hmm. i had a, i had a macbook pro at the time you know the 2012 one where it has yeah a that's wonk. the best one <laughs> yeah that's the, the last one. one that you could upgrade all yourself i got two of yeah. them one's just sitting here waiting for the other one to die i know uh, i was like <laughs> right i know octane uses nvidia so maybe i can install the um octane on on my on my uh, laptop and, did you uh, was that one with an nvidia card yeah, it's got a, it's got oh, a one. Never mind. One I got gigabyte. the cheapest one. Mine's crap. <laughs> a one gigabyte graphic card. Nvidia nice. graphics cards. The last time they they put one in, mm-hmm. and uh, I got the student edition. I think it was like Octane one point two or something mm-hmm. or something Jeez. like that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it basically crashed all the time, and I was nice. just like, oh, I'm not, not going to learn a thing on this thing. And yeah. I use Mac like literally one hundred percent for my for my job so Mm -hmm. sorry uh, the kind of thought yeah the thought of getting a pc i was just like oh i really i really don't like pcs but i kind of have to bite the bullet and as as i kind of looked into it and um like what i wanted uh, in terms of like power and um usability and stuff like that like i got a um in in march i saved up from january to march to get a razor pro laptop which is on my now yeah and um so it's got an eight gig nvidia card in it does that have the gig- does that have the 1080 in it yeah it's got the tape yeah it's nice. got the 1080, got the 1080 one jeez nice. yeah. yeah that's expensive so, <laughs> <it's>, yeah <laughs> well but that's luckily, got a killer screen and stuff and like oh, i like really that good, you've yeah. got the, the the trackpad on the side you know and stuff yeah it's really yeah. nice yeah it's, it's really cool and like i got that in march and the kind of the rest is history I, I like with that sort of stuff I, every night pretty much i've come home from work i've see my family my family's gone to bed and then i've just grinded on a on mm-hmm. a night time yep yeah. yeah abc always be hustling ah. <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> you're dead to me <laughs> <laughs> it's funny so um i guess let's let's get into a couple topic things here yeah. um let's talk about um one of the things that you had was eight bit, sixteen bit, or thirty two bit, and when do you was use this it? your topic? Oh the, well, it, well, like, it, was, it, it was the one that was in the uh, Dan, the, the Slack, yeah, right? Dan Marino, uh, Urban Polar. Uh, was it or, Slack, or I, was I, it? Uh, hold on, I'll look I'm it trying up. to remember who it was now. Since it was like today or something, I think. Yeah. Oh. I because I, I saw was... Penny talking about it, but I I think maybe that was a reference to. Um, yeah, whoever uh, brought it up. Urban Polar Bear, Dan Marino. Yeah. He okay. said, yeah, uh, right knowing when to use certain bit depth and for rendering, because that was a normal, that was just a conversation I think we were having in the general, you know, thing. Yeah. And then he threw it up in the show topic ideas. But yeah, it is a really good, it is a really good topic. And I, I it was funny because when they mentioned this, I was like, oh, this would be a perfect one for Phil to handle because, you know, when I was working in a retouching uh, place, I was always rendering out 32 bit like 32 yeah. bit was EXRs was everything that I would, I, I would always mm-hmm. render that out. Could never go 16, eight because they were always looking for more color information when I would pass all that other stuff over to the, uh, the other retouchers. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so 32-bit usually, what what I would use 32-bit for, like in my, in my line of work, is if I need to do exposure changes or mm-hmm. I need to rebuild the uh, the beauty pass from scratch. Basically, if like so with the mm-hmm. with the car stuff, mm-hmm. um, we have to control the paint and the reflections and all of that stuff, like down down to the literal the layer of of glossiness on on right. the paint. So so it's multi pass. Okay. It's multi pass. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. We literally we literally get or like twenty multi-pass. twenty passes <laughs> just for the just for the beauty, and then we'll get um, utilities as well. So utilities is kind of like your um, multi mat masks and mm-hmm. your normals and your AO and all of, all of these sort of things, but thirty two mm-hmm. bit usually I I would only uh, use that for if I need to do an exposure change for instance because you you need that range like in a Z depth pass or in mm-hmm. a in the reflection you you're just getting some hot spots or or the specular you know those sort of things mm-hmm. um, yeah sixteen sixteen bit is where we normally do um, the majority of the CG kind of comping where yeah. you can use um, a lot more of the like adjustment layers. So you, yeah, that you was, still got, you still got that range. But, that was my um, biggest problem with uh, working in 32 with the other guys. It's like, I didn't yeah. have any of the options to work in any of these adjustment layers and stuff. So I always would, would try and get it as close as I could and then move down to 16, but I'd always have some sort of color shift or like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so so one of the one of the things that I brought to um was uh, the ability to go from 32 bit to a 16 bit linear uh, profile inside of Photoshop. Uh-huh. So we've got a custom profile um that allows us to do that. So where you've got, where you've got your build up in 32 where you've got your diffuse um it'll go diffuse raw total lighting reflection refraction specular mm-hmm. that that kind of builds up your rgb pass um it allows you to um have all of those blend modes still work in a 16 bit environment but you but you get the added um functionality of having all of the um adjustment layers and all of the things you can do in 8 bit mm-hmm. but in a 16 bit linear environment Mm. If, that, if that makes any sense <laughs> no that, i mean that like, makes a lot of sense to me i don't know yeah. like, because i've worked in retouching i've worked in this type of stuff i i get it i don't know if yeah anyone else understands uh, an 8 bit <laughs> is 8 bit is everything else so yeah what what i normally do is i'll kind of um if if the cg guys are giving us 32 bit or 16 bit passes um like i'll i'll kind of see if i need to use that or um, I'll just go back into 8-bit. Cool. Gotcha. All right, so let's... Let, what about video stuff? Because, I mean, mm-hmm. I, we... Dave, you and I, we rendered out 32-bit EXRs when we were doing our big Christmas thing at the end of the year right. last year. You know, and I, I feel like at times we probably could have just brought it down to 8-bit or 16-bit. You yeah. know, we didn't necessarily need all that information. And See, I this think- is what Penny. This is what Penny was saying in mm-hmm. in the Slack because it, yeah. it's kind of you need to know your output. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, it, like it kind of if it's going to be like broadcast quality, it's going to be used on huge screens. And yeah, yeah, like yeah. It has all mm-hmm. of these different outputs. Then having the most range is is going to be better. Of course, um, but mm-hmm. if it's if it's a web video. There's, yeah there's no reason for you exactly to. Mm-hmm. And, you know and that's unless i'm having a problem i usually just keep it down you know yeah um, mm-hmm. but a lot of times too we're using the exrs because we get the layers you yeah. know it's mm-hmm. it's not necessarily because we need the 32 it's because you know we're you know it just puts it all in inside one nice little package and you have one file path instead of Mm-hmm. 16 right. you know and yeah then you yes. can take yeah, that exactly. uh open exr or whatever that uh what is it is it open exr yeah i think it's open yeah. EXR, yeah. uh the yeah. plugin for after effects and then you can just pick what layers you want and it's really cool too because you could say okay use this rgb but use the alpha from this other thing or mm-hmm. you know yeah. that kind of deal and it does make it easier at times um you know the only thing that does suck about that is if you want to do any sort of work on the layer you have to pre-comp it yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You can't do any work on a raw open EXR layer, you know, without it being in a pre-comp. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, there's just some other weirdness and stuff that happens. And if you're working on something super simple, that's going to be like, 
you know, some super easy logo for like a web video. It's like, do you really need to go through all those steps? Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing that applies when you're talking about like After Effects as opposed to Nuke. You know, yeah. if you're if you're using Octane, everything looks like super um, super good already because you did a bunch of like camera in camera post effects and you're rendering it out and all you're going to do is like string the image sequence together and maybe change the vignetting and export it mm -hmm. then why go to nuke and set up all these nodes and do all this other stuff just to get your your pass out yeah you yeah. know to a, a quick time file or something mm -hmm. exactly so yeah I would, I would just suggest like if you're if you're doing video i would just do a test frame if you like if you, you just want to render one out at like 16 bit and 8 bit and if you don't notice any difference usually it's like things like banding and stuff you get in that's the what color. i was gonna say yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you get those sort of like that's where 16 bit is gonna it's gonna be better with with ingredients and mm -hmm. um kind of like high high contrast and that, those sort of areas and the high saturation and um, that's where 16 bit is going to be a lot better for you like the thing you were showing off this week, you were working on with like the guy standing there smoking, and there's like yeah, fog yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh -huh. like if you do that in eight bit, you're you're seriously yeah. going to see banding on those layers exactly. of fog. And you can you can see it like with the with the, um, the compression that Instagram and and Twitter do on on yeah. these images, mm -hmm. they it, it gets compressed, and you you see all, see a lot of that sort of thing. Was, but, mm -hmm. was that image a three D character, or was that, that yeah was yes a, he yeah, was. So I, yeah, I got I got it Gosh. from um, CG CG Trader. Uh -huh. dot com, mm -hmm. um, and it was like twelve dollars or something like that. Wow. Um, but with all this, um, you know, Blade Runner um, <laughs> stuff coming out, I was uh -huh. just like, man, I need to get on this. And like, obviously, Cool Fire's got this noir <laughs> look as well. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I got to get me some of that action as well. Yeah. <laughs> he actually mess he messaged me on Instagram. He's just like, you better stay away from this noir stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i was like you you got it covered you know, you, no worries from me yeah oh and and i guess i forgot about that i should put that into the uh the show notes as well but um he's got a uh this is mitch myers we're talking about because you didn't know who cool oh, yeah. far was if you didn't he's got know. a new pack that came out uh and i it's it's a lighting thing and i wish i could remember the name of it offhand i don't have it on me you remember what the name of it is i'll find it it's um, something lighting, light setups, or something like that. Wasn't it's it? like I can't uh, it's like light setups, but it's um, I think it's free if you sign up for mm -hmm. his newsletter. Yeah. Um, so we'll find a link to that. We'll put that in the show notes. It looks pretty cool. I haven't downloaded it yet. Um, I don't know. So where it is. check that out. I th I think I put it in resources on the on the Slack channel. Oh, let's see if I can find it I here. It in there. So. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't know what's going on with my Skype, but you guys have disappeared. But the, yeah, you've the disappeared still, from us too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the the audio is still there. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not <laughs> yeah. going to touch my I'm not going to touch my laptop basically. Mitchmyers.tv. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, all right. So um, we got that. Okay. And then Liam had a, a show topic idea as well. He said, um, "I'm ter I'm terrible about going back to previous clients and saying, hey, do you need help with any videos this month?'" You know, any tips on approaching previous clients and making them repeat clients faster? A lot of my clients are repeat, but I always feel awkward bringing up the topic. Uh, this is something that Matt and I are very familiar with after this week, mm -hmm. um, because we've been we've been reading um, Joey's book, The Freelance Manifesto by Joey Kornman. Yeah. If you heard last week, since this is the future, um, right. last week we had Joey on, and he's amazing. So if yeah. you haven't bought his book already after that glorious episode, you should. I've even read it and I'm not even a freelancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's but a there's lot some, of... there's there's a lot of stuff in there that's totally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, relatable, you know. Very much. You know, there's some there's some great stuff in there um about how to approach clients and you know, mm -hmm. we used some of that this week because we've been building kind of our, you know, our our database and just making mm -hmm. sure that we reconnect with people. Yeah. You know, um, especially those who, you know, may come to you um, out of the blue who you've never worked for before and say, oh, yeah. man, I've got this cool project coming up and it sounds like super awesome. And you're like, yeah, totally. Oh, it's going to pay a pretty good amount of money. That's great. All right. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Oh, my. And then they say my client backed out at the last second. Yeah. And you're like, oh, 
because that would have been great. If and I had so, ten thousand dollars for every time that happened, yeah, they could have <laughs> paid for their whole project each. Time. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, the thing about it is, like, it may be a client that would be a really good repeat client if you would have done that one first job with them. Yeah. But you never had a chance to show them what it was going to be. So we have a lot of people on our list like that, where it's like, and we have notes. It's like, so, they came to us, they wanted this thing, they wanted to, to do this, but the, it fell through, but we never af- actually have worked for them before. Yeah. So this is basically, uh, and I'm not afraid to share any of Joey's information because, you know, like he said last week, he's not afraid to share any of it or whatever. He's an open book when it comes to that. So this is what Joey recommends doing. Um, so we have a, a Google Doc set up between me and Dave, and we've got a list of every single client that we've either ever done work for or ever have quoted anything. Sorry, I got a, apparently an 18-wheeler <laughs> monster truck running by my car there in my house. Um, so we've got every client or every potential client, anyone we've ever sent an estimate to, we've got um, their contact information, who they were referred by, how much money they've sent us or they, they've they paid us they've over the past. Us. Yeah, it, basically how much money they've done with us. And, um, and Joey recommends, here, let me just pull it up because I've got it here. Um, when you're contacting them, you know, so you've got this whole thing set up and then you set up these different like, uh, uh, columns basically. So Mm -hmm. in, in your, your document, it's, it's whether you've contacted them, the, the last date you contacted them, this is just the way we do it. You know, whether they've responded to you, whether they know you, they like you, they trust you and they've booked you, you know, and if they need Mm -hmm. you, those are all Joey's. Uh, things and then we've got a section for notes where we can make kind of notes about this particular client or what they were looking for or so on and so on so that we can actually go back to those notes and reference them when we're sending them an updated email see i thought that the no column was like not that they know you but if they know that you have tried to contact them uh yes yes so okay. no okay good because that's how i've been using it yeah no that's fine yeah so say you send an email to a client just like your cold calling or whatever. And uh, uh, two things that Dave and I have been using were recommended mm-hmm. by Joey. What what are the two pieces of, or the two um, plugins? One of it's called, one of them's MailTrack. MailTrack, which will allow you to see whether they have actually opened the email or looked through any of the links. So you know whether or not like, like you made it through the spam, you know, you had a good uh, uh, subject matter and stuff and you, you got them to click the clickbait, you know? The and page. <laughs> what was the other one, yeah. Dave? Uh, it's called Write. What is it called? Write. Write. It's R I G H T. Write something. Hold on. I'm not on write. the computer that has it installed. Write inbox. So. <clears throat> write inbox. Okay, so write so, inbox yeah. allows you to basically send it out at a preferred time or later or something. Because mm-hmm. the, the big problem that I've noticed is like. You know, Monday morning, you're catching up on all your stuff, blah, blah, blah. And so if you're sending out an email Monday morning uh, or or even Friday afternoon, people aren't going to read it until Monday morning and they're most of the time going to skip by it. You know, this all all Joey's book, you know, <laughs> even if they know you, you know, even if they know be you, like, yeah. Oh, he's just wanting to chat, blah, 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 but I've got to work. So yeah. I'm going to read all these other emails that came in this morning instead. Yeah. And I do that sometimes. Like if we get an email from someone and I really want to spend some time on an actual really good response, you know, instead of just saying, hey, dude, thanks for doing this, blah, 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 you know, <clears throat> something that I can't get out quickly on my phone. I'll, I'll actually leave it as unread and then right. get to it whenever I feel comfortable. And sometimes right. those just may go away. You know, so write inbox allows you to send it at a preferred time. Mm-hmm. So I was writing emails to clients and stuff like that. And you don't want to send it out Thursday, you know, evening. You want to, or, or even Friday evening or Monday morning, you want to have it sent at a specific time. So I've been, you know, scheduling all my emails, you know, and all my contact stuff to go out at like Tuesday afternoon, like around 11 o'clock. You know? Yeah, and I've actually looked into um, some of that myself, just researching online, and mm-hmm. it says that 10, well, first of all, I think Tuesday is the best contact day, but then mm-hmm. 10 a.m. is the best time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but there are so many different levels of clients. You know, like I said, there's the people that just ask for a quote. Uh-huh. There's people that, 
you know, you were very, very close to doing the actual gig with and it fell through, you know, Mm -hmm. there are, there have been some that we've actually started on a gig and it's fallen through and it fell through and they, and then they had to pay a, you know, they had to pay for, you know, what we had done done so far, Yeah. Yeah. you know, which they felt bad about, but you know, it's like, dude, you know, I don't know what to tell you, you know, um, Mm -hmm. we did the work. Um, then, you know, there are, there are clients that are very, very straightforward and to the point. Mm-hmm. Um, they may come to you often, um, but they're not looking to have a full like friendship relationship with you. It's just, you know, hey, I need this thing and you give it to uh-huh. them and it's fine. And there's some that are like super, super awesome, become friends. You know what I mean? Just that kind of a thing. They're the ones you want to keep. Yeah. Yeah. It, it shouldn't ever be like an awkward thing I, I i don't think like whether the whether whether you've had like a bad experience or something before or mm-hmm. maybe then it's kind of awkward but yeah it, it should it still should be like on a professional level and yeah right it, like you shouldn't ever feel awkward i don't i don't i don't think yeah and anyway. you have to keep yeah. it, it it's awkward it may be awkward for you to send an email and stuff and you may sa- sound like you're being salesy which none yeah. of us really like to sound like that which and which we are (laughs) but like the conversation like you have to realize that some of these people you know you like on a professional level or they like you on a professional level so asking if they've got any work coming up or something it's not being schmoozy it's just saying hey it's letting them know you're available right exactly yeah like they they say that the average human can only keep 150 people mm-hmm. yeah. like in their in their brains or That's whatever. Friends. So yeah. if you if you've if you've worked with someone three or four months ago, mm-hmm. you're not necessarily going to be on that list. Yeah, you know. So right. just kind of reminding, oh hiya, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm here. still here. Yeah. yeah, that doing that's that kind of thing. It's like oh yeah, I've got this project. Perfect, you're perfect for it. And yeah, I I don't think it should be like an awkward thing. It's just you should schedule that sort of thing. It's like I've, if I've not worked with this client for three or four months, why why is that? Maybe I should just drop them a line, and you can schedule that kind of thing with your with your list or whatever. Can yeah, you? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know? can set up reminders to send yeah. you. You know, set up reminders to hey, email this person this day. You know, that's what that's what we do. Uh, yeah, our our sales guys or like if we haven't worked with with someone, it's just like, hey, just thought I'd drop your line. This is the kind of stuff we've we've been working on. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just that's just thought I say hi. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the ones that I know very well, you know, I'll say, well, you know, how is so and so doing? How's the family? That kind mm-hmm. of thing too. You yeah, know, and catch up. You know, for the ones that were those one timer, hey, can I get a quote on this type people? I say, hey, you know. Um, just uh, wanted to check in with you. This is Dave. You know, we quoted you on that project with the, you know, rotating something, something. The rotating dingus. <laughs> the rotating dingus. Like uh, last year, um, you know, hopefully, uh, the, you know, a lot of times like what will happen is their client will decide, well, we don't want to do 3D anymore. We're going to go a different route or something, you know, say, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. so sorry. Uh, sorry that didn't pan out. Hope the rest of the video went well. Um, you know, just wanted to shoot your thing and it's you know just show you what we've been up to you know and really that's it i would love to hopefully work with you here in the future you know you what what joey says not to do is make it an obligation for them to email back right like don't say hey you know so questions 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 talk to you more about this right yeah just say look here here's where we're at hope you're doing well and 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 that's it. That's the end of it, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it needs to be personal, but mm-hmm. not and and not salesy in the, in that right. sense where it's mm-hmm. just like you need to call me back because I haven't had work from you in X <laughs> right. time. You know, <laughs> right? It's yeah. just like don't forget that we're available if you need us. And then yeah, the the other thing is that 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 mail tracking app. You know, there's a free version. Yeah. Um, however, I don't like that because then it puts, oh, mail, powered by mail track at the bottom. Powered you're like, mail tracker. Oh, you, man. Like, you know, you're, hey, your let's clients. let them know that we're tracking, you know, whether right. you're opening the opening it or yeah. not. Yeah. You don't want them to know that. So, you know, it's, it's $4 a month. And unfortunately you have to pay for pay a year. Yearly. Like don't say $4 a month if there's no $4 a month option. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I had to pay 50 something dollars in order to you know yeah and what's stupid did you notice that they they keep it on file and they say you will be billed annually so now they're gonna like charge us again in a year every year you know yeah it's so stupid my my speed of fight did that you get one you get one job from that 
you get yeah, one if job you get from one that, job from that, for, you know, yeah, that's right. Pay for itself. That's true. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting to see because when you put links in there, it also tracks the links. Mm-hmm. And so, if you log into your site, you can see what links they've clicked on, you know, and all of that. And you know, it's it's kind of nice to know. Oh, so and so did see my email. So now that field that Joey talks about with no, you know, if they know if the you know there's yeah. been a contact or not. If we didn't have that app. We mm-hmm. would think, hey, only like this number of people have responded to us. And so the other people must have not read it or maybe they didn't contact us back or we don't know. We don't know if they even got the email because yeah. if, if they don't write back, we don't know. But it tells us, yeah, they got your email six minutes after you sent it and they haven't written you back. Yeah, And, yeah, they, yeah. and they didn't even click your links or maybe they did click your links. But what, what that does for you is, you know, if you send somebody a reel and they don't click on it, you're like, oh, well, they haven't even seen what we can do yeah. so maybe maybe at some point later on down the line you hit them up on the phone or something you know um or and maybe if they don't send something back at all maybe they're busy but you can at least write in that field okay yes they have contacted or they they know that i've contacted them they're pro they probably just have too much going on right now so yeah for sure mm-hmm. oh, anyway anyway Man, it's been a long time since I had to do that sort of stuff. <laughs> You're yeah. lucky, dude. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's like the worst thing ever, you know? Yeah, and when you, you got be in no sales. work coming in and stuff like that, it's like... You start yeah. to panic and you get depressed and then you're like sending out emails and emails are the worst and you never want I to hate send email. out emails while you're hate depressed it. and like begging for work. <laughs> I get told off all the time for not answering emails all the time. <laughs> but funny. we have, we have this we have this thing at work called Rocket Chat. It's basically Slack. It's like a GitHub version mm-hmm. of it, kind of like a free version. And uh, we have that like throughout our offices. So as soon as that was in it was just like, "Oh my god, this is amazing." Yeah, like, you just literally like, oh, the the renders are here, or you know, like the JPEGs in the two client folder, or, yep. or something like that. All of these things you'd get emails for before, but mm-hmm. now it's just like I just don't even open my email. I just have Rocket Chat open. And see, I tried doing like, that with it. my old company, and they were so like, I don't know, they're so old school. It's like you have to send an email for everything. And it's mm-hmm. so dumb because a lot of this time, in, instead of like sending an email or something, you could literally just walk over to their desk and say, hey, yo, that thing's done. <laughs> you know? Nah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's, it has been so good. Like the communication between the departments was uh-huh. really flaky before. And it was kind of like pass the buck on the blame mm-hmm. like, and, and certain things but like with this thing you we set up a channel for each job and, and all of this sort of stuff and like the communications is so much better and so much quicker mm-hmm. um, than, than email and like we're like our office is quite big so getting out of the seat for some of the cg guys is um is some like it takes some doing <laughs> you know they've just got yeah. their headphones on they're jacked into the you know and just having a little pop-up on the screen is yep. awesome for them mm-hmm. yeah. um, of course that can also yeah, be been, uh cool. distracting i've noticed yeah this yeah. new slack has been very distracting <laughs> <laughs> yeah with the with the gifts yeah we have the gifts like where you like you do the like i think on on ours it's like explanation mark gif and then you type whatever and it just brings up a random random, random one GIF based on yeah as, so, as soon mm-hmm. as we realized that it was just like solidly just like gifts like in everyone's like, channel <laughs> well here's here's what i found with the gif thing you can actually be extremely specific with it yeah you know? yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. uh uh and and here so like i uh i actually before i send out a gif a random gif i go into my own chat with myself and test it out to see if it works before i'll send it in the general one so i just see that's something you can't do on rocket chat you can't send stuff to yourself on 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 rocket chat so you just have to like ask like proper russian roulette on on the gif sometimes i don't know why you can't just do like you know your phone can do where you just look through a list and click on the one you want yeah yeah like on like on twitter Mm -hmm. like i I like that kind of or facebook or any of those social apps you know yeah exactly chat apps but yeah yeah so um yeah so i mean those those are good those are good uh good programs i definitely recommend them you know yeah um, buy Joey's really book. Helpful. If you haven't yes. bought Joey's book, just buy Joey's book. <laughs> just Come do on. It. Yeah. <laughs> just, just take do all it. your dreams 
and read about him in Joey's book. <laughs> just do it. And then just do it. <laughs> and then just do it. Yeah. No, like seriously, it's got so many good uh, uh, references and like, you know, stuff. I really wish I had re- written the book. Cause it's awesome. I'd love to meet that. I'd love to meet that guy one time. He's cool. Joey. He's, yeah. he's a very I'd, cool guy. I yeah, like well, that guy. I, well you'll be team. hearing the 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 episode here coming out here in like two days. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's 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 yeah. a good episode. So the uh, the whole team in yeah. School Emotion are just like super class acts. I like them a lot. I met a, a whole of handful of them at uh, <laughs> Squanch of Motion. <laughs> our, uh, I met a handful of them at uh, the half res, and they were just all very very cool. Yeah, yeah. I met I met Liam for the first time mm-hmm. and really really hit, hit yeah. it off with of Liam. Um, and Mark, the Houdini guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really, really nice guys. Yep. Um, so um, let's let's do uh, let's go to some other things here. We've got um, okay. So we met a guy named Mark at um, Half Res, mm-hmm. and he actually came to lunch with us at that pizza place. And it was yeah, we he was the guy a- who the Houdini guy who we didn't know who he was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they call him Houdini Mark, and yeah. I, I didn't get really get it. I mean, it was just like, oh, hey, how you doing? And that was it. We didn't get any chance to talk, yeah. you know, um, and I wish we would have. Um, and so, um, you know, he joined the Slack the other day, and so we start talking about stuff, and he um, has a website and everything with, with you know, he's got some behind-the-scenes stuff on how he's done stuff before. Yeah. Um, so I just happened to go to his site and I was looking through some of it and um, he did some really fun stuff using Nuke and Houdini. Oh, and yeah. So yeah, there's yeah. this one called Paint Party that you have to check out. It's just this whole particle explosion thing and it just looks so organic, so incredibly mm-hmm. organic. And, and it's like, how does it look so or- like? You know, I mean, yeah, you could have done this using X particles and a lot of work, um, or you could have done it the way that he did it, which is taking things like uh, ex- existing baked footage, for example. He has some of some flames and stuff, um, and some exp- a kind of like explosion stuff, mm-hmm. and taking that into Nuke and turning that baked video into Vector. Uh-huh. And then from the vector, then um, bringing that into Houdini and attaching particles to it. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Like, if you see this, you're just going to be like, well, like... Cause it's so good. It's so good. It? It's so good. Um, you, you know, he, he was... I was talking to him about it on Slack, and he was like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like what they did with the... Um, um, we talked about this on the show, too, a couple months back. Yeah, it the, was the, uh, using flip fluids in Houdini and yeah. using actual footage in order footage. to drive the the movements of the fluids which was so crazy yeah so it's that same technique so but the nice part about it is if you go to this page he's got kind of an explanation underneath on on how he approached it so that you can try it yourself because um now i'm not sure about the limitations of the programs but technically you could get nuke a version of Nuke for free and a version of Houdini for free and start playing with this. I think <laughs> that's well. Yes, I believe I that is technically think. true. Now, because I don't know if you can export without watermarks on both of them, though. Um, I think Nuke is completely free. It just won't do anything over HD resolution. Yes, that's probably and the Houdi- the Houdini uh, apprentice mm-hmm. um, thing you can you can export it because that's that's what I've used. What are the, the limitations? The twenty, min- the 20 minutes I've spent in it, you can <laughs> export like VDBs <laughs> and and stuff like that. It's funny. Um, what are the? Li- I did that in t- I did that in Tagma. Um, you know, like how to make a cloud. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah, and then, like, you bring I did that bring one. in your own geometry and your own and that VDB. Sort of thing, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't remember exactly what the limitations are of each um because back when i was working in nuke it was at a company and so it was their version and then there was um um the houdini that we had was actually a paid version that we paid for so i don't think i've ever downloaded the apprentice version and the apprentice version downloaded the apprentice version i got rid of the old version because they made us pay again and i was like i don't want to pay if i'm only going to use this like once 
the, it's yeah, so expensive that, as well, yeah, that, isn't that it? That sucked. Yeah. It's like we paid for it because we wanted to learn it, but we didn't have enough time to learn it. And so now yeah. it's like... You know, Always go with sucky. the apprentice version until you actually learn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's the thing is the limitations and you, you're like, oh, well, I don't want that. The The big problem to me is that I, I know this applies to Nuke. I'm not sure about Houdini, but in Nuke, like your scripts, they call they call your node graphs scripts, I believe, mm-hmm. if, I can get, if I'm yeah. getting that right. Um, the scripts are not compatible with the full version. So say you get really good at it, using the free version you can't bring that into the full version if you decide yeah. to buy it now i do I think, think you can you can have them convert it for you if you buy it yes i think so i think they'll That's... do it once i don't know right but so so basically it's this you can't have a whole team working in nuke and like say one of them pays for the full version and everybody's yeah. just working and handing over handing it over to the one guy who has the paid version i think that's kind of the reason for it um, so if you do decide to buy it, I think you need to take everything you have and just like, you know, get it all converted at once. So make sure you keep track of that. Yeah. So. Luke's um, so expensive as well. We, like we've got, oh I think we've got like three or four licenses in my office. It's like 10 K. Like, yeah. It's like insane. for Nuke X. It's, but the thing is though, like there's some things that you just don't need Nuke X for mm-hmm. and all the guys that come in, all the all the free, oh, oh, I need new hex. I need, I need it. <laughs> so the IT guys just complain, like shouting at them, you know, the whole time. It's just like, you don't need it for this. What exactly are you using it for? Right. You know, because otherwise they have to get a new license or yeah. rent one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy yeah. talk. Um, <laughs> so um, this is one I actually used uh, this week. This is a link you sent me. Um, this is Mitch Martinez Martinez dot com free 4k red epic stock footage and it's this incredible library of stuff that you can use in compositing and he's basically got every piece of footage categorized and you can watch the vimeo version of it and then when you're ready to download it it actually links you to archive.org i think that has all the the (laughs) high resolution version i guess that's a good way to do it um it probably doesn't cost anything for him to host it there so a lot of ink bleeds and stuff. That's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. So actually what I did, because this is what I was looking for, and, and Phil, you sent this to me, is I needed just some, I, you know, I had done some particle stuff um, in a project I was working on on purpose to to make it look kind of like, you know, part free floating particles, stuff like that. You know, these kind of firefly things, kind of magical, whatever. But then I wanted to add some bokeh, particles just in the foreground or just kind of moving around just real faint and you know nothing too crazy you know just kind of add to the layers and gives that depth doesn't it yeah it gives like, it, it depth know, and then yeah, you know some yeah. of it's bokeh and you can take and mm-hmm. add like the frisch left out of focus plug into it it makes it look really nice and you know things like that um so i just wanted something real easy like that and so i actually took the one that you recommended which was snow and I took some of the mm-hmm. slowest version of the snow I could find. Some of them I would freeze frame and just move them. Some of them I would kind of let them go or slow it down just a little bit. Um, so it wasn't too stuttery. And of course, change the color from white to mm-hmm. more of an orange or a yellow. Uh, so yeah. it looks like, you know, dust or This particles. is cool. Some and they're 4K stuff. as well. So yeah. if, mm-hmm. if you're working in HD, mm-hmm. like you can scale them and move them like to make them feel a bit more organic or, or, or and stuff like that. So yeah, it's I don't I have no idea where I found it, but I just I've literally got like hundreds of bookmarks like of all these things <laughs> wow. that I find while I'm while I'm doing research on. Ooh, dude, you you're, should you're, uh, you should release a bookmarks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're a freaking <laughs> library dude. Like anytime <laughs> in any of these boards, anyone has been like, hey, do you have that thing? Yeah, you know, do you have this plug this in thing? that is no longer existent? Oh yeah, hold on. Oh yeah, there you it. go. Yeah, you it. did that yeah. for me. I, I wanted like some <laughs> roots plug in that everybody had linked to this one guy's YouTube and the YouTube linked yeah. to his Dropbox. And you know, anytime there's a Dropbox link on the internet, it disappears. Yeah. And so like you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I got that. I was like, dang, dude. <laughs> I just I I don't know. Like I just have a I have this like kind of memory where I can kind of file like i have a file system right. so if anyone mentions something i'll just go ah oh, i've seen that and i can go back in this filing system to kind of bring that what i need to type into google 
to bring it back but nine times out of ten i'll always save it so well, I'll, good. I'll either save a bookmark or i'll download it and, and just store it away because i'm the same way except i'll remember where it was and it's not there you know and this is why yeah. like i think john c dvorak always makes this big um this big recommendation is like if you find some obscure website with some article or anything mm-hmm. that's like linking to something it's like save it or, or an yeah. article that you're like, whoa, this article's incredible, and it's on, you know, Joe Schmo's webpage. Do a file print to PDF, you know? Take these modules, you watch a, you see a good tutorial, you're like, oh, that would be cool to use. Don't think, hey, I'll go back to that Vimeo page someday and download that, because it probably won't be there anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it stung me before, like, just where a job comes in, you're like, oh my god, that that would be so perfect and you you've got an idea of what of what it is and like you go you go back to where it was and you try and download it and it's like no it's not not available anymore and then the job is so much harder because you don't have that <laughs> you know you like kind of have yeah. to do something from scratch or that's you know where it, where it could just been like just a really easy you know something's really easy just to download and then kind of re redo it in to fit the job, you know. That's Cornelius's uh, issue that he had was that that um, that corner grunge thingy mm-hmm. uh, was like not available. Oh, anymore. it takes like oh yeah, it takes the chinks out of like mm-hmm. geometry, doesn't it? And, like the cor- on the edges. Yeah, yeah, and and like he was looking for that, so he didn't have to do it manually, or that he didn't have to zbrush it and make all of the um, just just like that ridiculous poly count that he was already dealing with um yeah. <laughs> and somebody just happened to have that plugin it was a plugin that you couldn't get anymore and someone said oh dude i still have that you know with- the german the german raid zero yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so zero G- zero i don't know yeah <laughs> um so we've got um <clears throat> some other links from you here we've got uh, C four D modules. This is something I think you sent on Slack this week mm-hmm. too, which is great. Now, are, yeah. are these all Houdini uh, modules for Cinema four D? I think I think so. Yeah, I think they're all. Ooh, where's that at? Of, I don't see that you know, on here. Uh, it's code von, dot oh, volk, yeah. sweet. Dot fr, That one, yeah. Um, the third one I have seen before. Um, I think I saw somebody talking about it or something at one point. Um, it's oh, like a three D yeah. noise thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of really cool stuff. The one that I was super interested in was called Spline, Gla- Spline Guide yeah, um, mm-hmm. for hair. Because, you know, just like cloth, hair, you know, it's really easy to take hair or to take cloth and then just like, you know, put it on something and it's there. You're good to go. But if you really want to fine tune something, it's really hard to like get cloth where you want it to start you know which is why people use things like marvelous designer things you know like that um and spline glide allows you to kind of like guide these splines for hair into like a certain path you know so for example Wait, it's called spline guide and it guides the splines yes Whoa. can you imagine Sorry. that uh so like how do they come it, up with yeah that? <laughs> it, it has kind of like this uh what's what's the movie um uh frozen you know, mm-hmm. with it, it looks like a um, something from Frozen or from uh, what's the other one, uh, Rapunzel. You know, with like knotted hair, tangled, you know, tangled knotted yeah. hair. Oh, tangled. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Tangled yeah. knotted hair, and then like braids and stuff in it. And um, like that would be really hard to just manually try and set up uh, from the get go. And I watched that video on how it works. It's really cool. I wonder if you can do like you know like all the knit weave um animations you know like all that kind of it's all really popular at the moment you know all of that stuff i don't know oh yeah yeah i know what you're saying this whole website is in french (laughs) yeah you can do the google translate thing on it yeah it's pretty obvious though when you click if you do it in chrome (laughs) but um yeah it's really cool i i really like that i idea of learning houdini so that you can make these things that will then help your workflow layer on, you know, yeah. um, mm-hmm. build something that you know you're going to use a lot as if mm-hmm. it were a plugin, essentially. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, you just bring it in and, and uh, you're good to go. Like, for instance, the top right on the site, you know, it has a house, a very oh, simple low polygon house. And 
the house is kind of building itself, Mm -hmm. you know, by all the different pieces kind of like flipping up and like, you know, to manually keyframe something like that would take a really long time. And probably Uh if you were working on something like that, you would just be like, well, I'm just going to have to, you know, brute force this, you know? Um, Man, I've tried doing stuff like this and it sucks. Yeah. I've done <laughs> like a lot basically of basically folding stuff. stuff on the parts, you know, yeah. on all the edges and stuff. Mhm. And and you know, um I did a an origami piece not too long ago of mm-hmm. kind of an origami heart. Yeah. And I tried to use the pose morph in order for it to work. But what happens is stuff doesn't fold the way it should. And I, you know, I eventually got it to work, right? But it was very simple. And, but I, it was one of those things where I'm thinking, you know, if I had to do this every single day, I would need mm-hmm. a system in order for this to work. So, man, that's pretty cool. That's a really cool little plugin. Bookmarked. So, yeah. <laughs> this is this is why you gotta be on Slack. Everybody's like just mm-hmm. putting all this really cool stuff out there. You know? I mean, maybe it maybe it's a balance thing. Maybe the time that you waste on <laughs> on Slack will even out with all this. We'll, we'll say, yeah, we'll, go with, we'll yeah. go with that. <laughs> just pretend <laughs> yeah. it'll make me feel better, you know. <laughs> all of those taco gifts are gonna pay <laughs> off. That's right. They're, they're when all you need that, off, that, that when you need that exact taco gift, you're like, Oh, I've seen that somewhere before. <laughs> right. Man, I'm such a PC yeah. guy now. I'm I'm hitting control all the time. Yeah, you are boy. All the time. I'm like, why didn't I copy? Oh, I hit control. See, I'm lucky. Both the, my Mac and my the, PC, uh, they use control on everything. Yeah. Like, I'm able to copy and paste because my main thing, you know, I have three computers using Synergy across three computers. So I use one mouse and one keyboard, and it copies, it uses the control on all of them. That was the hardest thing for me switching from Mac and PC, like the whole mm-hmm. control. Um, like, I just use my, like my little finger, like my pinky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like rather rather than my thumb like just for that and it seems to kind of work like mm-hmm. between but now and again at work i'll just do control c like while someone's behind me and i'm just going ah oh, such an idiot <laughs> <laughs> like, like such an idiot doing that like why isn't it working <laughs> it's funny so your other link here bird.tv b-e-r-d yeah so this this guy i think I think he works bird. At, i don't know how you say it bird yeah um he Beard. works at man versus machine okay mm-hmm. And he's he's got some like t- nice tutorials on there and and stuff like that. Just how to do like weird kind of blobby, kind of grayscale gor- uh, gorilla ish sort of stuff, mm-hmm. but probably a bit more advanced. Um, but they look kind of cool. And he's he's done he, he did a, like a really nice um, worked on a really nice animation for Nike. It was all these different like soft body kind of. Um, animations and Is that nike like who, nike yeah call it nike, nike yeah America. yeah nike yeah <laughs> <laughs> um have you seen the oh uh, gosh what is the guy's name now i'm it's something eight zorg eight or zerb eight or Z, you know what i'm talking about he's been posting stuff uh, on the facebook uh octane group um gosh it's something eight, and I can't remember. I thought what what did he do? I did thought he do? I wrote it down somewhere. He's doing tutorials. Yeah. Oh yes, is it Zulu eight? Zulu eight. That's that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I was. I mean, this guy kind of came out of the blue. Totally. Yeah. And is doing just everything is really clean, really great looking stuff. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's really high quality sort of yeah. graphics and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, like all on Vimeo. Wow. And yeah, it looks really nice. This Burn now, TV, this Nike Air Max spot is beautiful. Oh, it's really good, isn't Gosh. it? And it looks to it, me. It came out a while back, like in the summer sort of time, but um, yeah. Uh, Z- Zulu really nice. 8 comes up as an advertising, advertising agency in North Sydney, New South Wales. Yeah. Uh, so maybe it isn't Zulu eight then. So, but it's the same logo. I thought maybe it was somebody oh. eight, somebody else, but it is the same. Uh, so if you oh, if you click on tutorials, oh. oh man, just all this stuff is pretty. The the one thing I will say about it is interesting is that the thumbnails for every single um, post, yeah. as well as like the intro, are very grayscale gorilla. Oh, very. Yeah. Like, like yeah. they're all using uh, Gotham font. It has mm-hmm. this diagonal yeah, yeah. thing going on it. 
And then um, at the beginning of every single one, um, when you see like the, the logo happen or whatever, like it looks just like a grayscale gorilla. What is this again? Zulu 8's tutorials. Um, yeah. But the, it's a lot of Octane stuff. It's really pretty. He just did his subsurface scattering. I'm assuming it's a he. I don't know. Z. Sorry. Z- yeah. Zulu E. <laughs> um, yeah. This this uh, subsurface thing is is just awesome. So yeah, check that out. He's got. Uh, I mean, I Z like that it has. Turns black you should put that in the show notes. You should put that yeah, in the show notes. I will notes. definitely it's, do it's that. Um, yeah. This is. There's only six of them so far. Mm-hmm. Um, subsurface scattering, infinite white room, slicing up your objects, optimizing your viewport, uh, creating inflatable objects, which I know a few people have done EJ that did, already. I'm pretty sure EJ's done did that. Yeah, and uh, oh, yeah, from yeah, splines yeah. to tubes. Cool. So, so that is that. <clears throat> and um, what else do we have here? Um, okay, so then we've got this. <laughs> we got this section. Uh, that you sent us called Cool Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, you cool already wrote stuff. down your recommends? That's crap. We're supposed to ask No, no, no. Guys. He didn't write down his recommends. <laughs> no, 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 I, no. I always just paste no, the old recommends okay, in. I, okay, good. I okay, good. I was, I, I was about to be a little, uh, little, <laughs> little, little irritated. Um, <laughs> this one is called uh, Loadout, Twitch Loadout, um, which I'm pretty <laughs> sure I have seen before. I want to say maybe David sent it to me or something. I don't know. This the name loadout sounds familiar. Yeah, I, ju- I just grabbed a few things off uh, Behance. Like I've just got a massive appreciation list on on yeah. uh, Behance of all like stuff that's pretty much most of it's like Cinema of the. Phil, uh, I do the same thing, thing when I want an ha- idea. What's <laughs> your What's here. your website? Do you have a website? Uh, I don't, but I I do have RayZero dot com. Oh, but. It's just a literally, yeah. It's just a it's just a loading page, but um, it's it's in the works. All right, it's a, it's it's on the list <laughs> of other things to <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, just curious one. because really all this stuff you you should be putting on your website. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't know. You've got a. Um... It's 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 a it's a thing from a past life. So I used to be a, I used to be a web developer and a web designer. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So all of that just like absolutely bores the right? crap out of me. Dude, <laughs> we, so, we got a website like... we need designed. <laughs> Do you want to you work on it for us? <laughs> yeah. I, no thanks. I'm telling you, dude, like I used to do that stuff kind of on the side. And, yeah, same. You know, it took over oh. my life. It literally like... So you'd like say, oh yeah, I do web design if you want to do that as well. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. And then you get recommended and recommended again. And and then all of a sudden, I'm not retouching anymore. I'm literally just sat in Starbucks oh, coding a, a website for handbags. Or something yeah, like that. and you know, it's the just... problem is that every time someone came to you with a project, it would be something like more complicated than you've ever done before. And so it, oh, totally. you, yeah. it's not that you couldn't do it. It's that you had to figure out how to do it. And then I got to the point yeah, where yeah. like I <laughs> was getting really good at figuring out how to build Drupal sites and then find <laughs> the modules that would do what I wanted it to do and hacking it yeah, together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did oh, the same with God. word with WordPress. I was just like, right, I need to stop yeah. like, actually doing proper web development and then just do WordPress sites that then yep. I can pass off as my own. <laughs> and it's not that I can't do it. It's just that I don't yeah. like doing it. Same. You know, exactly. It just takes so long. You just literally sat there just writing CSS for yes. like a whole day <laughs> before you even, before you even start. Or finding you know? other people's snippets of C- CSS because you don't yeah, know how to yeah. do it and you're copying and pasting. Exactly. And it's like, does that work? Oh and then go over to oh the other gosh. tab, refresh, refresh. Oh no, gosh. that didn't work. Yeah. Go over there. Flashbacks. Change it again. Refresh. <laughs> nope, that didn't work. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And then you get like, you must have these clients that just come back to you for the most stupid thing. Like you show yeah. them how to use WordPress, mm-hmm. and it's like it's super easy. Mm-hmm. Like this is how you put an image. You like put, create a new post. Mm-hmm. There's your new image. It all works. Like people can buy stuff off your website. It's so easy. Mm-hmm. And back in and the then day, they come back and it's like, like they they just can't do something like change the font or something like that and it's just yeah. like seriously yeah. i'm going to charge you like 125 quid just for this so it's your <laughs> fault <laughs> back in the day they would you know you would have to change everything you know and, yeah. and if you were building html sites it's like oh they want to add four links 
to the top oh yeah. well you have to go change those links on every page every page and yeah like, oh god <laughs> and and then it became and then it was like okay well they want new text and they want new a new photo and you would have to change that by hand yeah yeah, uh, yeah. and then once you could you once you could get them to do it by your, by themselves and you would give them a login and give them a password mm-hmm. and all of that and they, they still couldn't figure it out yeah it's just like <laughs> what <laughs> have you never used the internet before you can post a picture and then to imagine imagine having that but like 12 websites that you manage like that you host oh yeah. my god oh man there's such that a was, difference between a- like being able to do something and yeah liking what yeah and loving what you do <laughs> exactly do exactly something. oh man Th- yeah that's one of the reasons why I became a staffer. I was just like, I need to get a retouching job because I mm-hmm. do not want to do this for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Phil, I was like, we got a website you could do for us. <laughs> yeah. Do it in no your free do. time. We got no rush. <laughs> no, we kind of have a rush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to get paid. Oh, man. <laughs> so uh, this other link, you have a journey through the universe. Is this like a VR experience? Um, I think it's like a, you know, where you go like in like a science museum or something like that. And it's kind of like projected oh, above you. I got you. Like a dome like, thing. Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah. It's like a dome thing. Yeah. But I thought that was cool. It's very uh, space, space, space. It's very space, space, space. Um, <laughs> yeah. This other one. Here. But it was all done in Arnold as well. That one. That one oh, it was. With all like VD, VDBs and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. VDB? It was interesting oh, I to see. see. <laughs> uh, this one is called researcher first teaser sci-fi short movie this guy is a lone lone wolf does it he's done <laughs> yeah lone wolf uh, project sort of thing but it's just amazing so he's done all like the concept art first and it's cool um did all these style frames and then he's, he's actually done a uh, kind of a short teaser you know i, I so only good. have kind of one gripe. did we just straight off the this? bat so, have we mentioned so. this before i don't think so here, huh. here's the one gripe that I have. Like, if you, especially if you're looking at like the first ten seconds of this, that mm-hmm. his uh, ship and his spacesuit are way too shiny. <laughs> so With fired. the hipping and the hopping the and, and, so and the bopping and the. Okay, seriously. Like, I apologize to every single listener oh my because gosh, that so song funny. gets stuck in it my does. head every day. And then on the Slack, someone else says shiny or that comments on my Facebook, <laughs> shiny. And it's like, all right, it's I've in had my head. it stuck in my head. Everybody oh says it's like it a constant loop of that one, People's People. Um, uh, What's the other <laughs> song? I can't remember. Uh, all these other songs that you guys are bringing up uh, i know what's the have one you, have you ever seen uh, something called uh, teen titans yeah teen titans, oh, teen go. titans go and there's a there's a song on it on one of the episodes called the night begins to shine okay you need to listen to that oh, song okay it is literally the most addictive song have you heard like my um, kids my kids love it have you heard um, the, I love the sour grape song uh, no, on Teen Titans so. Go, that one gets stuck in my head. See, I haven't watched that <laughs> show. Sour grapes, sour grapes. I watched the old Teen Titans, like in yeah. O- now, new Teen Titans Go is where it's at. Oh, okay, they they did an episode originally, yeah. like a couple of seasons ago, yeah. and then they've just done a four like episode kind of like Night Begins to Shine thing because oh, they okay. go back into back into this like eighties retro world. Oh, that's funny. Where it's all it's all like kind of, you know, all that like gridded ground and they're like running on wolves and there's lasers everywhere and all this sort of stuff. Did you see the and this- Teen Titans Go episode where they watch the old Teen Titans and they're like, what did yeah. they get cancelled? That was so <laughs> <Yeah>. good. <laughs> that's funny. Oh man, I love I love that show. Yeah. Now there's also a link to a concept art piece for that as yeah. well so that that's what he released first and then he, and then he released the, the trailer for it so i just thought i'd put both of them in there um there's uh another link here you have for something called intimate cities this is done in redshift um hence yeah. the clean fog mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah very clean fog but after after i saw that have you seen that like uh, underwater skull thing that I did? I was just like, oh man, that's yeah, so that cool. Really like, cool. I need to, I need to get, and um, I, it's on my, it's on my behind. I, I, I but, say um, fog, of course, but this is because it is yeah. underwater. It's basically the same thing, right? Holy I mean, crap, this is You're just beautiful. adding, you're just adding kind of the dirty floaty elements to the fog to make it look it's like it's so underwater. cool. It's so cool. But I was trying to get wow. all of that in Octane as well. I was trying to like, so yeah, I, good luck I with that. kind of, I used like 
I, I I used the, I used the environment in in there, mm-hmm. and I used like really tiny cubes and just put them in a cloner with a ra- uh, random effector, and just got them like all kind of moving, mm-hmm. and it it creates that bokeh when you have the depth of field. Right. It, it creates like really nice bokeh. Um, but yeah, I, I managed to do like I watched David's, um, you know, his like kind of futuristic city where he does the fog with the environment tag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I did that. Um, and it works. I, like, I managed to get it to work with your um, luminous plugin as well. So what yeah. I did, you know, I was asking, I was asking you to um, if you could animate the um, yes, the core Someday. sticks. Someday. We're working on it. So so I it's kind of works, like I my swear. hack my my hack for that was that I just I just rotated the the um, the light as I was mm. kind of animating the skulls. Yeah, like I had the like I've got an animation of the skull kind of like drifting down. And all the bokeh moves and kind of goes in and out of the light and stuff. And I've got the I've got the spotlight just rotating around and and it kind of does the job of looking like you know the rays are coming down and yeah and hitting the top of the skull. But it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. And then the last one you have on this link here, or this set of links here, it is called Zoom. Zoom. And uh, let's see what this is here. Got that dang shiny song stuck in on. my head, dude. I hate you. <laughs> this is like going through a zooming through a um, like an alleyway, an alley. It's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> I like that. It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, I guess. That's cool. Um, it has all the different passes and stuff to look at, so that's really cool. I like yeah, that. That's nice. I like that. It's no Cordel- Cornelius Damrick, but <laughs> no, definitely not. No um, way. All right, which that show is really good. Which, by the I way, really, I, I, really I like. saw that I saw that Cornelius and who else was it? Tom or somebody both got stuck. Yeah, like on, because of some on subway their way problem. to some like like meetup or presentation or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ra- Raphael Rao. Yeah, oh yeah. yes, that was Raphael. a massive storm. It was a yeah, it was a massive storm or something like that, and the trains just like no. Nope, some got flooded or something. I mean, they yeah. were stuck, mm-hmm. had no way to get to where they needed to go. I guess they I think they were both presenting but they were five hours away or oh, something like that man. like that sucks. sucks that's awful <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all right so um before we do people's people let's go to uh Yay. let's do our bro graph recommends Yay! okay this will be fun all right so. <laughs> you ready for this yeah have you I'm, I'm sure you've listened to the show so if you, for those who haven't listened lately um we've started this new thing called bro graph recommends where basically we ask, you know, kind of their recommendations as far as like movies, music, TV show, what they like to watch. So you can kind of get a better idea of what these people are, you know, whether or not you should like them or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Phil, favorite movie? Yeah. Um, my, mine's a weird one okay. because it's not really kind of special effects and all that sort of stuff, which I, which I do like, but... My favorite movie is uh, Uncle Buck. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I just absolutely like it's one of them movies where if it's on, I have to watch it. Awesome. Why, why Uncle it. Buck? Like, I don't know. I, the movie's great. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I just love it. Just, I think it's like a childhood thing. You know, you know when you just have like it's more of them one of those movies where you've kind of attached it to a, a moment in time. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think it's just one of those things. Like I have the same kind of reaction to Groundhog Day as well because yeah, yeah, I just yeah. watched it with my, watched it with my dad and mm-hmm. yeah. yeah just, you know, I have yeah. the same kind of reaction to Groundhog Day. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of them. It's one of the movies. <laughs> See, it's, it's funny on, because it's like he 11 just repeated PM. what you just said. You know, and then yeah. <laughs> Any joke anyway. would you have to say? See, that's funny All because right. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, favorite music or uh, uh, band. Um, well, I really, I really like, um, like eighties kind of rock, you know, like Guns N' Roses okay. and, and Skid Row. And, but lately I've kind of gotten that really kind of eighties stranger things sort of vibe. Oh, okay. yeah. So I've been, I've been listening to loads of, um, like synth new wave, okay. like eighties style music while I'm working, mm-hmm. which kind of gets me in the mood for that. That sort of that sort of type of work, but All right. my favorite band is is Guns N' Roses. That's that's they're my they're my favorite band. All right, uh, favorite TV show currently, um, or ever. These could be currently th- or ever. I think 
Game of Thrones has got to be up there. All right. I think. Okay. That's... But I've been watching that Ozark recently. Yeah, is it good? Um, it's all right, yeah. It's 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 one of them ones where it's like... It's quite um, Breaking Bad-esque, mm-hmm. where it's tense and, like, depressing. And then there's a kind of moment of, like, wow, I can't believe you pulled that off. You know, that sort of that sort of stuff and it's all kind of around the drug industry and is it is it this- funny at all because i feel like with <laughs> what is it jason bateman or whatever whatever his name is no I f- not at I f- all i feel like going from arrested <laughs> development or like any other movie that yeah. he's done just to him it's like it's, it's, it's another one of those things where like a comedian does like serious stuff mm-hmm. really well yeah you know like you know um do you remember that um film with robbie williams when he did that one hour photo yeah like, I, like, I heard that i think the weird. film before that was oh man it's so weird but just amazing <laughs> like how psycho that guy is but yeah he just kind of he does a really good job in in ozark i think all right cool all right. um yeah. let's see favorite podcast you don't have to say bro graph um, unless it's true yeah apart apart obviously apart from you guys um i the, one of the recent ones that i've started listening to and i've kind of gone back and listened to previous episodes as well is um fx guide okay have you heard, heard, heard um, of that one have or you or? listened it's, it's to... a website right yeah, yeah. it's the, the same so guys they, who do fx, like... FX phd yeah it's same same guys yeah, yeah. have you listened so, um... to um the pro video podcasts uh episode yeah. on that with the guy from yes uh, yeah. yeah 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 that was a good episode that's what got that's that's what actually got me on onto that and i was like oh this is actually really cool because mm-hmm. they're kind of like industry leaders and yes they've got their fingers in so many pies of just like future tech and, mm-hmm. and they do they talk about like really current stuff and you know like new films that are coming out they've got a lot of v, uh, vfx in it uh-huh. and they've got one of the guys who's on the podcast is um i think he works at ilm so he's like quite up on like all of all of that sort of technology. I think the last episode they talked about the new Star Trek Discovery and oh cool mm-hmm. the kind of effects on that and how it's basically just Hollywood effects, like but in a TV um, schedule. You know, cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, hey, it's really cool. Yeah. Um. All right. Favorite uh, plugin. plugin. Um, I guess Octane. Okay. Is probably okay. my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Headphones. Uh, headphones uh i'm not a massive like headphones guy okay. but um i just use the i i just use the apple well, who are earphones. you wearing right now though yeah. who are you I, i've got um they're just like a cheapo like kind of have you heard of tesco it's like kind of walmart here uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. Just like yeah, yeah yeah like 50 50 pounds like sort of noise cancelling those headphones. are some so heavy these. headphones all right we're out see ya (laughs) so okay so which one would you prefer to be your favorite the apple ones or those super heavy ones the apple super heavy ones yeah Yeah. we got to talk about your uh your your headphone choices here sir (laughs) all right (laughs) oh so we're gonna ask them questions and then whatever they say we're gonna berate them on it yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) like no no you should be doing what we're doing if it's not bose noise canceling it's crap (laughs) what was the ones you were doing an advert for last time it was like a bose comfort 35 bose comfort 35 35. (laughs) bose comfort 35 call now (laughs) <laughs> all right uh favorite website or chrome extension uh favorite website's probably behance okay i'm literally mm-hmm. on there 24 7 yeah looking at stuff so uh and uh uh this is my favorite your favorite life hack oh man mm-hmm. i was ta- i was talking to my wife today i was like right i've got to come up with a, a life hack <laughs> I could, like literally the only one i could think of is putting you know when you're heating up pizza in the microwave uh-huh. and if you just put it in straight it literally is nuclear yeah like yeah, yeah. it and i just goes like solid rock um if you put a glass of water in with the pizza mm. it, it heats it perfectly okay, okay. see i enjoy the water. nuclear pizza of course oh, really? i will sometimes <laughs> just take pizza straight from the fridge and just eat it yeah of course if you, if you, my like, i was taught like it's so weird like when i got married uh, my wife, my wife, haven't done that in a while. Um, uh, she always uh, puts the the pizza in the 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 fridge, right? Well, me growing yeah. up, I was always taught 
put it in the oven and just leave it there and let it be room temperature, you know? Mm, like, or just right. leave it out, you know, in the Obviously box. Obviously, it doesn't last as long. <laughs> in I, the, I don't in know. The, I mean, yeah. like, I, but I was more likely to actually eat it if, you if leave it, it was out. just, like, yeah. laying out and I saw it. It's so yeah. funny because yeah. if anybody left, like... I don't know, bread's okay, but if you left a block of cheese on the counter for 24 hours, or if you left mm -hmm. a a pan full of sausage meat crumbles that you cooked yeah. on the <laughs> counter for 24 hours, you would look at that and say, ooh, that's been sitting out for a whole day, I'm not going to eat that. But something right. about it being on a pizza makes it okay to eat 24 hours later. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? I don't understand. Like, yeah, That's pretty good. I never thought of it that it's way. It's pizza. It's okay. Yeah. The problem yeah. that I had with leaving the I used to leave it on the counter all the time, and I used to eat cold pizza. Number one, uh -huh. I got tired of eating cold pizza. I would just put it in the toaster, so I didn't care anymore. Yeah. Number two is that when we first got one of our cats that we have now, uh -huh. she realized that if you left a pizza on the counter... And she uh -huh. got up there, and she slowly pushed it off the counter uh -huh. that it would open. <laughs> yeah, it would just split open, and the pizza would go everywhere. So she would do that every <laughs> time, and she would eat like two slices of pizza. <laughs> and so we oh, couldn't man. put them on the we couldn't leave it on the counter anymore. So that's a shame. Yeah. Uh, we uh, uh, another thing leaving out. Speaking of food, leaving out, and I think <laughs> yeah. they do this in London or you know in Europe or whatever, uh -huh. but they don't do it here. They yeah. think it's weird. Do you leave? butter out yeah 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 yeah. Oh, yeah yeah see yeah but it's dairy see, i do i bad? do too like no 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 like no, you no, just no. put a stick of butter on a plate and let it get yeah. room temperature yeah and like nothing is better than being able to scoop that butter and put it on some toast it's like butter Man, the, it's the worst thing like having butter that's been in the fridge and then you have toast uh -huh. and oh, yeah. then you like uh -huh. it. oh man yeah it completely oh destroys your toast <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, it, it almost sounds like a Mitch Hedbergism, you know? It's like, I like cold <laughs> butter on warm toasts because I like tasting things when they're ruined, you know? Or something. <laughs> uh, may you rest in okay. peace. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <clears throat> all right. So, cool. All right. So we got that in there. All right. So guess what it's time for? Peoples, peoples, where do you get the all right, I did the Do thing. It. No, please don't. All right. So, um, everybody, go to your <laughs> Twitter or your Beeple Here, viewer of choice. Here's what I'd like to say. I, I would like to say we have a Beeple's People channel on the Slack. Uh huh. I want to hear you all's <laughs> thoughts on some of these. Oh, yeah, totally. You know? I and actually, <laughs> a little birdie told me. That uh, we may have gotten the uh, fifth meal one uh, correct on uh, the Beeple's People thing. Really? So, yes. With the yes. planet's orbit being longer? Maybe, yeah. So oh, Interesting. Interesting. You're going to tell me that Or it air. was a reference to uh, the, the, whatchamacallit? Well, I'm sure it was reference uh, to fourth Demolition meal. Man. Yeah. Oh, Demolition Man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to tell me off air then. <laughs> So anyway. All right, so the first one that we got here, uh, if you go to your Beeple viewer, mm -hmm. um, go to October 9th, Year of Our Lord 2017, <laughs> and um, you're going to find one, the title of it is O. Yeah, I got it. Hold so, on. I got to go to Tumblr. It's all about, oh, it's okay. all about the O. Um, now... This is interesting. Um, this is, uh, to me, just from a style standpoint, from a build standpoint, it looks to me like, again, this could be stock or it could be forester. To me, the weeds and the grass could be forester. I think it's forester. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, there's some maybe displacement forest textures going on at the top and bottom. Um, now, what this brings back to me is the fact that we've been talking about this whole underground thing for so long, about how, you know, like in that other thing, it seemed like everything was underground. So there was like, yeah. you know, um, the real short ceilings and stuff in the in the one with the uh, the ducks and like the people in the domes, like they were baking people or cloning people or whatever it was that we decided it was. But... <laughs> um, 
to me, it almost feels like this could be another room like within that one where they were making the clones of the people because of the short ceiling, you know, that it's an underground thing and that, but, but also, um, I don't know. To me, it's like, you know, how can a tree grow without, and the grass and stuff grow without light, you know, and is this the mm. light source, you know, that allows them to grow underneath uh, okay. with, with the O, you know? So what I what I was thinking was that that kind of dot in the middle is actually so it's not it's not like a donut shape it's actually like no. you're looking into a room that has kind of like this orb in the in the middle and that that whole environment is being is like like all of the trees and vegetation is absorbing that light creating oxygen for this Whole underground overground world right yeah right hmm. that was but i think it has to be an o because he titled it o titled it o so it's not yeah. a taurus yeah you yeah. know <laughs> uh-huh. um i mean i guess it could be a taurus for an o right it's not a sphere mm-hmm. though no it could mm. be a taurus or a flat plane it o. could be it could be a cylinder you know or a uh, a tube it could be a tube you know so like yeah. that's actually an entryway or something. Yeah. That, yeah. So that I was thinking it was more of a hole. door. Like it's more. Yeah, it's more of a door looking into a bigger, whiter room that has a kind of sphere in the middle. There are so many mm-hmm. different that's kinds in in all of his stuff. There's so many different kinds of domes and spheres and portals and stuff. It's almost like we have to start doing a categorization <laughs> of what these are. You know. You know. Is this a type A? Is this a type O? Like this would be a type O. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, this is ty- uh, type B type, negative. Type B negative. Um, you know, so we're gonna have to like classify yeah. these orbs now. You know, to figure out what they are. Do they transport you? Do they suck you in? Do they blow you out? <laughs> do they? Uh, you know, do, are they a, a, just a light source? Uh, like, mm-hmm. what are they? You know, we gotta. You know, or is it something you're worshiping? You never know. Yeah, you never know. I guess you never know. You never know. All right. So what else you got? What else do I got? Um, the Show next me what you one. got. Okay, <laughs> this one. This is October twelfth. This one is called RS One, and let's talk about the number one big news. elephant in no, the room. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's big. <laughs> okay, news. That, but come that, on now. <laughs> I think my graphics card is like messing up because well, I'm getting, getting all these like little cubes and stuff. I get that all the time on my Mac. It usually happens after I've been rendering and doing crap for a really long time. And I think it just starts to freak out and I just reset and they go away. Hmm. Now, here's what I have to say about this, because if you look at the style of this in general, there's nothing mm-hmm. here that hasn't been done before by mm-hmm. people. Okay. Number one, he's got the astronaut. He's got the terrain. He's got the factories. He's got that little mm-hmm. uh, bubbly sphere uh, grain or silo uh, or whatever mm-hmm. that thing is right. that he's put in so many things. So let's think about this from a technical perspective. He had all of this stuff already, most likely. Uh huh. Okay. So, like, all the elements are there. Why would he do something with all elements that he has? Because he had to knock it out real quick. Because he was spending his time learning Redshift. Yeah, that's what you say. That's I've funny. Just, Someone also know, said RS is in Redshift. I don't know. I'm just thinking, you know, because all the because number one is look at the fog. You know. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. The fog an, looks pretty good. There's environment. So yeah, what? Why I thought this was Redshift is that all the other ones where he's used it in Octane and he's kind of used a maybe a Z depth pass to kind mm-hmm. of do the do the comping. Mm-hmm. This one is a bit more advanced mm-hmm. where you could still do it with a Z depth, but getting that light source behind Yes, exactly. Behind that is a little bit more difficult and the gradation between that light source and then a light source above it that's like a red sort of colour. Yeah. Right. That I think I think maybe considering he only learnt masks yesterday, <laughs> um, it's probably beyond his comping abilities. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't know. know. I mean you never know, but like it, Oh, you I never swear know. You never know. I saw him ask a redshift question somewhere in the last couple of weeks, and I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm just dreaming that, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, I wish yeah. I could remember. So I'm 
post something somewhere or something but i don't know i saw chad like a uh, chad um, met, um commented on instagram saying he need, uh, i'll get you up to speed on redshift or maybe or that's what like. i saw i i swear he made some redshift comment and i was like is he playing yeah. with it like <laughs> i don't know i mean i'm sure he's playing with it you know mm-hmm. we're all playing with it we are all playing with it um you're fired me. <laughs> what that god raise plugin yeah yeah and that's the other yeah, thing too God look, yeah. look at the uh look at the lights in this path that are that are going now look at the second one from yeah. the astronaut and look how defined those yeah. patterns are the the lights yeah. now he would have to do that in post or mm-hmm. do that in octane if this were octane and let's i mean let's just be honest if that was an octane it'd be really high render time just the amount of fog that you got going on here i'm just you know i will say like the lights like the are you talking about the lights on the ground Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, i'm saying those are those are very well defined too yeah yeah and to have that kind of yeah that's like that's like four hours four hours worth of like fiddling with the ies really the volumes i mean that really looks like it would be ies yeah so Mm. just saying you know okay so story-wise to me, honestly, mm-hmm. this looks like it's it's a nighttime version from another angle of the place where the pig is. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Because the pig is off to the side and you don't see the him. McDonald's, the McDonald's yeah, yeah, yeah. one. You know, so he's yeah. walking up on the structure and that's where they, you know, process the pig innards. The farts. The farts. The fart, the fart factory. Fart factory <laughs> Is that what we said? Gosh, I think that's we're what terrible. you said. I think you said it was pig fart, farts. I said it was just no, harvesting. No, I, I think that was David. I thought that, that David, sounds like yeah, David. Yeah, David said it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know. It's like har- harvesting pig farts. Mm hmm. Yeah. All nice. right. <laughs> that would explain the suit and the fog. So. And the no, but fog. you know, the thing is, if you're harvesting pig farts, you know, Maybe something went wrong in the pig fart factory and that guy is like the engineer and he's just like, man, he, I got the short straw to go right. and fix this pig fart accident. The thing, though, is that if you're trying to terraform a planet, a lot of people say that you have to create kind of a, a global warming type deal yeah. so that you can have clouds start forming and stuff and, and heat the planet up. So it's very possible. Carbon dioxide first, hmm. then nitrogen, then and, oxygen. And then, yeah. well, the methane is helping to create the... The uh, the are ozone. We, the, are we still the talking carb- about pig farts here? The carbon dioxide, <laughs> you know. All right. What's the know, last one? Niner. All right. So the last one, and this continues my theory. If you go to that, he's uh, using Redshift. Uh, yesterday's, which would be the thirteenth. Mm-hmm. Um, the title of this one again: Iridescence Cache. Mm-hmm. Irradiance Cache. I'm sorry, Irradiance Cache, not Iridescence. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so that is a redshift thing, am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. Just saying. So, but keep in mind, he also had an alternate title for this called, No, It's Like These Weird Glowy Orbs Everywhere. Uh, it, everyone is just, or sorry, the, no, it's like these weird glowing orbs. Everyone is just standing around looking in a super foggy warehouse. What are you doing? Because <laughs> that's the what the, the guy phone. on the phone is saying. Right. Yeah. I, I want to feel like that that's us. <laughs> inspired <laughs> by... <laughs> I, I want to feel like we were, we kind of inspired this one, where, <laughs> or at least inspired the alternate title. Okay, now I have an instant story for this. All right. Instant story. Okay, right. because Go. look at the ceiling. I was going to say it's kind of the same type of thing as the... Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's the same ceiling, the low ceiling with the air ducts, and to me... These are all the clones that are freshly baked, mm-hmm. and they're coming mm-hmm. out, you know, and and they're walking to the orbs because that transports them to where they need to go next. Okay, you know, they're they just woke, they just got woke. Uh, <laughs> the you know the guy in the phone, like honestly, I'm pretty sure that that guy on the phone has his Jansport backpack on, and he's the <laughs> same guy from the other one. You know, yeah. I mean, he's he's shown back up. You know, he's traveling. He's probably in charge of something. He's making sure everything's going well. Well, um, here's a question. In the previous one, there was an astronaut in a spacesuit because he needed to be in the spacesuit. Why mm-hmm. is it now that none of them are in spacesuits if they've been freshly hatched? Well, the air ducts, look. Oh, well, I understand I mean, he's pumping that. pumping o- oxygen in. 
All right. Yeah. So maybe the oxygen levels just needed to be high enough before they could. Well, you don't want to waste all that oxygen on an area where no one really is. Except oh, for that's that true. One guy. That's very true. I yeah. mean, that's a huge waste. It's just right. going to sit in there. So right. there's oxygen you, in the There's nothing like waking area. up to stale oxygen when you're, you know, finally coming out of a Well, you know, there's uh, st- a frozen seepage. coma. There's seepage and stuff, and you're pumping all that in there, and everybody's in the bubble. They're not breathing anyway. Right. You right, know, right. so you just keep I think it's dry you. ice. I think <laughs> it's, it's dry ice, and they're in a silent ice. disco. Yeah. They're in a silent disco, fresh out, need to experience something, so they just throw all the clones in there let's have a silent disco and again and, you know uh, look at the environment in this this is this would be a lot of work to do in photoshop especially yeah. if you look at look at the um, yeah, yeah, the yeah. duct work at the very back i guess yeah and look how well it blends into the scene mm-hmm. the lighting and everything else i'm man i, I got it this has got to be red shift maybe calling it yeah you know, because Maybe. if you're new to Redshift, I mean, what he's doing is not super, because everything's so dark, number one. Mm-hmm. There's not too he much that you be, have to learn. You know, he could just be using it for fog. Who knows? It's yeah. possible. That's uh, what I was just thinking, yeah. yeah. Um, I gotta hit him up on... It's almost too smooth. It's almost too good, though, the fog. <laughs> like, it doesn't have any kind of grain whatsoever in it. Which, that means it's not octane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah man that's what i'm thinking i'm gonna send him a message i think that he doesn't want to i don't i yeah. see here's the thing if he is he might it's not like that's the problem you say oh we're doing octane are you doing mm-hmm. we're doing redshift oh everybody's switching to redshift no we're trying redshift yeah. and don't make a big deal out of it like we're using it we're messing with it we're not saying we're dumping octane nobody's saying they're dumping octane so i don't think he wants the the blowback i don't think he yeah, wants maybe. to say i'm i'm trying out redshift and it's like oh my god octane is dead you know because people <laughs> isn't doing it anymore you know it, he doesn't want that so i don't know i'm just taking yeah. guesses again i know he's listening well th- that whole thing blew over quick didn't it because it was just like everyone's moving to redshift yeah. and then people were getting redshift and then kind of realizing that, oh actually it's this quite, is hard it's quite difficult <laughs> yeah oh <Aww. laughs> I mean, you got to work? It's like a baby's toy. i, I got to do comping afterwards? Ah, yeah. oh, man. Man, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Well, if, it wants, if you've got to be production ready, that's what they do in production. So. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so that's it. That's it, yo. Yeah. All right. Mm. All right. Dude, thanks for being on. Oh, so thank much you fun. for having me. It's so been, much fun. been awesome. Um, we are. Uh, we're. I'm glad we're doing this one because we're going to go out and do our thing. And you know, sometimes mm-hmm. there's so much. Uh, you know, a lot of times when we go do it things sucks like having to bring all the equipment. Yes. When oh, we're God. traveling. That's yeah. What it is. Yeah. Trying yeah. to do NAB uh-huh. and like you have to do a podcast and you're recording stuff and you're editing and it's like okay this time yeah we're, this we're NAB will that. actually be able to just chill. We're not going to yes. release any videos or anything like that. No. It'll be nice. Just hanging out. Mm-hmm. Go do our, go do our thing. <laughs> yeah. Go relax. So, yeah. um, I need to get out to the states again for for something yes, else. Yes, you do. Yeah, totally. Meet up with you guys. Totally. We can all share a Airbnb together. Yes, this time. <laughs> totally. Yes. <laughs> we picked the best Airbnbs be awesome. apparently. Oh man, that was <laughs> the best Airbnb. That's so that was good. A great place. It, was, it was like a hub, wasn't it? It was, it was a hub. Like, yeah, all of us so were hanging close out there. To, so close to the venue that everyone was just, oh, just come to our place and. Mm-hmm. That was, I, I literally only went to my place to sleep. That was literally, yeah. literally with it. your roommate. Was, <laughs> yeah, uh, with my yeah. Roommate. You got to watch that when you do oh, Airbnb because that's not fun. Oh man, that was that was awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like going to a that's hostel funny. or something, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah. And and uh, you know, you can hang out, you can buy liquor, and come back and do that instead of spending a bunch of money at the bar. So, mm-hmm. you know. yeah, yeah, it was good. Cool, cool cool yeah i'll try and i'll try and make it out to like i really want to go to oh, nab yeah. i've not i've not been to vegas before, yeah, so. you need to go uh, you should here's yeah. the thing and staying i don't know how expensive it is to fly to vegas from london it's, it's probably about 600 quid or something like that i think that's how, okay. how much la and it's pretty it's pretty similar See, sort of flight time you can just it, get so. it is so cheap to to be there yeah. you know like yeah. you're you basically pay for your hotels and you don't have to pay for your mm-hmm. flight you know mm-hmm. oh wow 
yeah. or you're paying you're basically paying for one or the other in a, in a way mm-hmm. you know yeah. yeah i mean the package deals they have are ridiculous so yeah now yeah. coming from that far away it's probably a little bit different i get that yeah but yeah mm-hmm. um yeah i want to do that all right so you it's just like so much more to see and and that sort of stuff mm-hmm. and yeah lots more people there. oh man yeah. so much to see mm-hmm. it's insane how much there <laughs> so is to much, see yeah. <laughs> so yeah. all right you can rate us on itunes please leave us a review we haven't talked about that really yeah. in a while Let we me would see love if we got any get a review um you know we we want to hear your opinion of the show and i think people who are looking for something like they don't know what it is you know a lot of people find us through youtube and through other channels and whatever um but there are some people that just type and I've heard a lot of people say this. I was looking for a motion graphics podcast, and that's what we are. Mm-hmm. And so I typed that into iTunes. And so when they come across these reviews, they want to know these opinions of, of what it's like. You know, what what is it like to listen to one of these shows? Is it entertaining? Is it super technical? Is it, you know, what is it like to listen to ProGraph? And nope. August fourteenth was our last one. Yeah, see, that's a long time ago, yo. We we need to get nope. uh, we need to get some more. <laughs> hey, you know what? We're still at five stars, so that's all that matters to me. Hey, that's cool. Um, hey, so, that's cool. <laughs> uh, leave a review, subscribe on you know your podcatcher of choice if you've just been listening on YouTube or something, um, and vice versa. You know, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll get a bunch of stuff uh, on there when it comes out. We've been doing this live stuff. I'm uncertain how we're going to handle the live stream this week because we are going to be out of town. Mm-hmm. Um, and we might be out. I don't know. So I'm going to have to talk to Liam about that. Thursday. See what we're gonna do. Yeah. I don't know what we're doing Thursday. Um, I, I'm sure we're going to at least a dinner or something. So yeah. like we've got to figure out or change the day. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know. Yeah. So, figure it out. um, we'll figure that out. Um, so just look for that on Twitter and stuff. We'll post and, um, Let's see. You can subscribe to our newsletter on the site as well. You can say you've been there, done there, done that, got the t-shirt with a no brograph, no mograph T, the Paul Bab Feel the Bad 2020 t-shirt, as well as the limited edition Gate Nisa Moon brograph t-shirt. Who, or, and if you join the Slack and look through some of our links, you might find a uh, sale for a t-shirt that pick up. Yeah. Exclusive. Just, we're Exclusive. Just, just out there at cost or whatever. I yeah, think. basically. So just if somebody wants one, we're not like selling them or anything. No, so. we we make zero dollars no, off no. them. <laughs> we even mm-hmm. on the ones that we do sell, we really don't make anything off of them. It's just for yeah. fun, <laughs> you know. It's yeah. not like we're going to become millionaires selling Brograph T-shirts. So, um, <laughs> if only. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and of course Brograph.com, and we're also on. Our live stuff is now on Twitch, so if you want to start getting on there, start subscribing on that. We're going to start, you know, stuff's already on there. When it's live, it's on there now. So, you know, just look at that. We'll start doing more and more here pretty soon. So um, just keep looking for that. And uh, that about wraps it up. Totes. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for being on, man. Oh, no worries. Yeah, we need to make it out to to England. Yeah. Do a big meet up there. Totally. Yeah. Totally. We should do a. We should do a (laughs) like a Kickstarter, you know, for to bring over a bunch of big, uh, big, uh, you know, people over to London and do like a world tour. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the scene, the scene over here. I've been to. I think I've been to one meter, Mm -hmm. and it's it's not that big to be honest. Well, never mind. Even even in London, (laughs) you know, it's it's not that big. But if if they had a big name coming over, I think. Uh I think it would be. It's just getting the venue and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, we do have we do have shows and um, you know, kind of trade shows sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah. All right. Cool. Well, that wraps it up. Until next week, I'm Dave. I'm Matt. I'm Phil. Have a good one. Later, bros. Pretty good, I guess.
Brograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in the HDR studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel. And I'm not here to judge. The podcast and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Aryev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hassenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammer, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omotola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrand, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.